championship is with me tonight. My friend, you are never alone, and I'll tell you this. I would have walked to Ely Stadium tonight to get to do this game, not just with you, but it's high school playoff, and what do we live for in Northeast Ohio? High school football, and we've got a dandy today. We've got a dandy two tonight. Two great schools, two great programs. I mean, I can go back to the Larry Zolina days with you and Benedict <laughs> when they were playing games at John Adams Field. Larry actually was my neighbor over on Joanne Drive, so I grew up, uh, uh, you know, being a Benedict and Bengal Roar guy when I was a little... You know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Early <laughs> indications again. Munch and I haven't worked together in two years. We haven't lost Wait a, a step here. It's, it's, been, it's been two years. It's been two years since the state championship with uh, Kirtland with and, Kirtland Ironton. and Ironton. Yeah, back in, oh down my at golly. Yes, but Munch is with me. We are here. We are at Ely Stadium. Again, a new Ely Stadium. We'll talk to you more about that. Mercy Beautiful. Health Field at Ely Stadium. It is the Division II Region 5 semifinal. The top seed in this region, the Benedictine Bengals, will tangle with the number five seed in this region, the Walsh Jesuit Warriors. These two teams know each other very, very well. They met in the playoffs last year. They met in game one that we had for everybody earlier this year. Um, much. This is one of those games, you know. You don't for the two coaches. There are no surprises. You know what to expect because there's a lot of familiarity. However, the kicker has been for Walsh Jesuit. They have lost eight straight in this rivalry, including that playoff loss last year, 27 to 20, up in Euclid, mm -hmm. and including a heartbreaking home loss to start the year in double overtime, 35-34. Now it's win or go home tonight here in Elyria for both these teams. You know, and you look at both of these teams, where does it all begin? What really makes it happen? The coaches, no doubt about it. Two great coaches. Yes. We've seen what Coach Alexander has done to the Walsh Jesuit program. H have they brought it back from the grave? No, it never was there. But he has revived them, and this team is as coached, as well coached as a team I've ever seen. Dave, you look at the players. They've got great players on the Walsh offensive defense. But when you look at the size of the guys, it's the old Woody Hayes. It's not the size of the dog in a fight. It's the size yes. of the fight in the dog. And that's exactly what you're getting when you're getting these Walsh Jesuit Warriors. But they're a well-coached and well-coached uh, a team makes a big, big difference when it comes down to a big game. The Warriors come in as that five seed. They beat Hudson last week 23-14. to They fell behind in that game 14 to nothing, and pitched a shutout in the second half, which to me, you know, Walsh averages 40 points a game. I mean, we know they can score much, but the fact that defensively they were able to turn things around and, and play much better against a good Explorers offense last week tells you a lot about where Hudson is at in this round of the playoffs. And you know, I'm, Dino, I'm glad you brought that up, too, because you draw a line in the sand. It's easier to say for college and pros, okay? Guys are a little bit older, mature. But what Walsh Jesuit looked at last week when Hudson got those 14 points off the get-go, wait a minute. We only allow 14.1 a game. Right. Let's just draw the line right now. This is over, Explorers. You're not going any further. And bang, they were able to explode and get the job in a big, big way. Something I was talking to some of the Walsh coaches on down the line and uh, folks involved with the program, they feel truly that some of their losses this year could have been avoided. Yes. The, the Hoban loss, the first Benedictine loss, just from some silly things that they did, perhaps a turnover, the blocked extra point. Yep. And uh, they realized that, and they're saying, hey, we know it goes down in the loss column, but the bottom line is we're here to rectify that this evening. Fumbles, interceptions, penalties. What our, our guy Dave DeLugas likes to call him, the former Avon Lake coach, Phipps. <laughs> I was talking to Kenny Rhoda today, our, our good buddy, mm -hmm. uh, and we were re re reminiscing about that as we were talking about he's got a playoff game he's doing tonight over in, in uh, at Byers Field. We're doing our game, and we were just talking about how, you know, the, in this situation, it's FIPS, fumbles, interceptions, penalties, and mm -hmm. things like that um, come to play. Now, Benedictine, they are the top seed in this region. They finished the regular season at 6-2, and two, a very odd red. They had two games uh, end up getting uh, not happening. One was a, a weather-related uh, issue, and the other one, they just couldn't schedule a tenth opponent. Mm -hmm. So they ended up being 6-2 uh, and two with their two playoff wins. They're 8-2, and two. but... And we saw Benedictine in Week 10. They lost to Nordonia after taking an early lead uh, against the Knights out at Boliant Stadium. And I wondered, I remember that night wondering how that was going to impact the Bengals. They haven't been terribly impressive in their two playoff wins against Firestone and Riverside, but they've played well enough, Munch, and they're getting healthier, too. You know, for instance, in that game against uh, um, Nordonia, 
Darrell Bedingfield didn't play. I mean, and 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 I'll I'll and make the argument right now. I think he's the he's best. He's the strongest he, on defense. Yes. on defense. To me, he's That's the right. best yes. defensive player in all of Northeast Ohio that I've seen over the last two years. And it, it, they're a different team without him. He's there tonight, and we'll see if that makes a, a difference defensively for Benedictine to avoid what happened, you know, a tidal wave of offense, which happened at Nordonia three weeks ago. You know, you look at Benefield, not only an interception for a touchdown from the linebacker position, four tackles for losses. You know, gonna just give a little quick example. Years ago, DeQuell Jackson with the Browns. First time he had over 100 tackles in a season, he just said means nothing. Right. Because most of them were 8, 10 <laughs> yards yeah. upfield. Wait till I start making tackles at the line of scrimmage in the backfield. And that's what Benningfield does. You know what Benningfield does? He also makes the team go away from him, go to the other side, which means they have to abandon their game. And here's the problem with that. In, you know, we, 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 Bettingfield didn't play three weeks ago. We got our really first look at sophomore Kareem Jennings. He is a blossoming star, and much like Bettingfield, you know, can play tight end on offense and is a playmaker as a defensive end. And now all of a sudden, if you try to take out Bettingfield, Jennings becomes the opposite player that you have to deal with. And he was brilliant in that game against Nordonia in a losing effort. And he's somebody now, you know, you, gotta, you, you can't just worry about number six. You got to worry about 23 when you're talking about the Bengal defense. And you know, too, you look at the Bengals defense, they also will go for the football. They'll jump routes, they'll jump lanes. Uh, we know that uh, um, Walsh Judgment likes those quick, crisp passes yes. that they break for some yak or rack yards after catch, run after catch, because their line isn't that big and they, they're, they're quick, but they have to, you know, they're not going to keep a pocket clean for three, four seconds, okay, for the towels. So the bottom line is these guys will be jumping routes today, too, trying to pick those off. Benedictine will kick off. Christian Cora has it teed up and ready to go. And Walsh Jesuit will receive to start the game, operating from the south, going south to north, or in our case, uh, right to left along your uh, ambient video screen. <laughs> now I have to ask you. Yeah, I, I know. Have to ask you a little bit of history. Did Walsh win the the coin flip? You, you know? know what? I, I I was I was chatting, and I I usually watch, and I didn't. You watch, know how important so that is to it. me because you know, know my line. General Patton never deferred. That's right. <laughs> I just watched that movie the other night, by the way. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's something special. But you're two special pro and, and again, you see the flying bee from the Crown Conference on the Benedictine helmets. You think of Walsh Jesuit and the great teams. Oh, of course, now a National Football League coach. Was there. Let's get it go. That's Let's right. Let's get it going, Dino. Here we go. And there will be a squib kick by Cora. Picked up at about the 10-yard line for the Warriors. Out to the 22, maybe the 23-yard line. And we'll see Matt Nato and company. And actually, they're going to say they're going to say there was a fumble there, Munch, and the Bengals have it. Well, that was a surprise because there was a swarming bunch of, uh, like I say, flying bees on the hats going to the football on the returner. Did not see it squirt loose, but uh, the Bengals have the ball first and ten. Interesting to note: Will it be the old let's throw it in the end zone on the first play to you know to yeah. get it back? We'll see if they go to Brand up top to Boy uh, Conkle or Greer. I believe that was Bell who had the returner for the Warriors who lost it. And it, it looked like it, he kind of went down in a funny way, but I didn't see that he had lost the ball. I didn't either. And quick, the aforementioned Brandon Boyd is not in there on offense. He's trying to check in here quickly. He was not ready to go. <laughs> Play clock at 15. Bengals still have time. So C.J. Yarbrough and company ready to go after the fumble recovery at the Walsh 22. Trying to capitalize right away. Here's Jackson on the carry. Swings left to the 20. And Dwayne will be taken down at about the 17, maybe the 16-yard line. Jackson, a good one. He's rushed for about 840 yards coming into tonight's game with 10 touchdowns. Played so well in that game against uh, Nordonia before he left the game with an injury, came back and played, but uh, got six on that carry, second and four. Interesting to note, blocking was set up nicely for the sweep. The tacklers had to come from the opposite side of the field to get to him. Three wide receivers, Yarbrough in the pistol with Jackson behind him. Now Jackson will move to his hip pocket on the right, and before Jennings can go on a... Uh, 
motion. We've got an illegal procedure penalty. Back it up five, and now it'll be second down and nine. So Marvin Conkle, Terrell Greer, and Brandon Boyd are the wideouts. Kareem Jennings will start at tight end. Dwayne Jackson, the running back, with quarterback C.J. Yarbrough, Anthony Iliano, Pat Morse, Joe McDonald, Eddie Dinwiddie, and Devontae James tackle the tackle on that offensive line. I appreciate you giving the true skilled players some plugs there, the guys from left tackle to the right Absolutely. tackle across the line. And it's a good offensive line for the Bengals. Jennings in motion, now second and nine, ball back at the Warrior 21. Here's a delay to Jackson. He's going to be brought down behind the, well, he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's really about it. Tyron Rogers, Tyron Rogers came in from his nose to make the play, and we've got an injured Bengal, and... I think that's Dwayne Jackson. It is Jackson, the ball who carrier. Is late. Boy, he is really in pain after being brought down back at the 23. So it is indeed a loss. And, the, and we just said three weeks ago, we were out at Bullion Stadium over at Nordonia, and Jackson had gotten shaken up on that particular night and missed a couple of series. And I just thought the Bengal offense was out of rhythm the rest of the game without him. And... Uh, the concern right now is Dwayne's well-being, not just for tonight, but going forward here. And he's got a number of trainers checking on him at the 23-yard line. 10.47 to go, first quarter, no score. Also, Coach Good, the first person out on the field, too, to uh, talk to his uh, fallen running back. Interesting because uh, uh, Javion Baker could jump in there. 62 carries, 296 yeah. yards on the season. And four touchdowns shows he's a, a money man. But once again, the rhythm is with Jackson when he's in the backfield. And Jackson is putting no weight whatsoever. However, he's on his left leg. He is literally just hopping off the field uh, with his right leg. So our best thoughts for Dwayne Jackson. He has played so well this year for the Bengals. Uh, but he's going to have to hop over to the sideline now. And as Munch said, I would imagine we will probably see uh, JVM Baker check in. Well, I'll tell you, nose tackle is uh, definitely a guy that's hard to move. Tyron Rogers, 5'8", 240 pounds. Talk about a bowling ball covered with razor blades. There yeah. he is. Antonio Patterson checks in as a wide receiver. It's an empty backfield. Four wide receivers set on third and long. Yarbrough looks right, throws towards the end zone, passes knocked away, and incomplete. They were intended for Terrell Greer. He was pretty well covered back there. Charlie Klug amongst yes. those back there on the stop. So it's going to bring up a fourth down and nine, and we're going to see Chris Christian Cora come in to attempt a long field goal. Dino, interesting, and I can't say anything, but uh, the scheme that time for Walsh Jesuits, you can't say anything but great things about it. Not only was Greer man on man, but immediately the safety recognized that, yep. it and jumped it immediately. They're going to mark this down. Yarbrough will put it down at the 28, so it's going to be a 38-yard attempt for Cora. Ball is down. Kick is up. It's blocked. Kick is blocked. Ball is loose. Still loose. Picked up by the Warriors. Flags go down. Warriors running on the opposite side and finally brought down at the Benedictine 40-yard line. Now we'll check on the flag here, and that may have just been the beanbag. But I thought I saw something fly out from the officials, and we'll wait and see where this marks. So the opening fumble does not come back to haunt the Warriors, and they may come out of this whole sequence with excellent field position. Dead ball, sideline warning against Benedictine. Well, it's crazy because you would think that Benedictine right then and there I'm not coaching the Bengals, but I throw the ball in the end zone to start the, the, the first play of the game. They ran Jackson. Jackson goes down. And all you can say right now, that is a huge W for the for that series of events yeah. for the Walsh Jesuit And Warriors. heads up by the Warriors. After they got the block, they returned the ball about 30 yards, and they've got it at the Benedictine 40. Here's Nadal rolling left, throws left side, pass caught at the 35, and slipping down is Gabe Gardner at the 32-yard line. And what does Nadal do? He rolls because he's not going to be able to stay in that pocket with that light offensive line and the hard-charging bagels coming his way. Mike Hatcher was over on the coverage. And give Nadal a seven-yard completion to Gabe Gardner, his 10th catch of the year. On the ground, here come the Warriors running left side. To the 25, to the 20, and down to the 15 is Justin Bremner. Boy, Bremner was a man possessed that time. Literally ran over to Benedictine Bengals, something you don't Ooh, see too often. Oh, I might have gotten that wrong. That may have been my guy, Jack Romanini, but I thought it was a... Well, Romanini's a hard no, no, it was, no, it was. It was Bremner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, Bremner and Romanini are both in there. That's why I was uh, not 100% sure of myself, but they're both there now. First down for the Warriors, and here comes Bremner again at the 15. Follows behind Romanini, and it gets taken down at the 10-yard line, but there's a flag down as Bremner goes down, and this one is going to be a holding against the Walsh Jesuit. So it'll be How first and long. do you see another running back in high school lead the way that time? Yeah. Romanini had a full head of steam. I mean, it, 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 was, it, was, it was like, you know, he exploded ahead of his teammate as you know, and, and again, it's not really a fullback, but Romanini kind of plays like a fullback. They operate out of that shotgun all the time. So, but he acted like a fullback there. That holding penalty move it back to the 25-yard line and make it now a first and 20 for the Warriors over on the left hash. As in motion is Josh Campagna, and we've got another flag down. This time, I think Benedictine. Looked like the left end yeah. up that time for the Bengals. Yeah, yeah, got a little jumpy. So instead of first and 20, it's now first and 15. Move the ball up to the 20-yard line. Now, if you want to put the fear of the maker in the offense, you jump and you get right in the quarterback's face and say, sorry, bro, I thought I had your snap count. But you do it when the team is back on their yes. own 20. Boy, and they're, co <laughs> they're coming close again, Munch. I think they jumped again. I believe they did. It looks like the left that's side of that Bengals that's line. They were, they were showing blitz, and they jumped over the line again. They had seven men jump into the box that time. That's un so basically nullifying that holding penalty. <laughs> we're back to a first and ten for Walsh Jesuit at the Benedictine 15-yard line. Let's see what Nadal does take advantage of this. As Nadal has a back to his right, he'll go on the ground inside the 15, down to the 14. It's Bremner again, and this time only gets about a yard or so. Bettingfield is there at the bottom of the pile. Also, Anthony Iliano there as well for the Bengals. And it's a gain of two, second down and eight. Well, I'll tell you, I'm just trying to figure out how uh, Passarello at 6'1", 2'15", or DeAngelo's at 5'8", 200 are going to block Iliano at 6'3", 2'8". Oh, between Iliano at 280 and Joe McDonald, a 300-pounder, not easy for any offensive line. Second and eight out like of the, the trips pistol. right. Yeah. yeah. Nadal looking right. Sets up a middle screen. Throws to the right. Pass caught right about at the line of scrimmage. And then getting taken down right about at that particular point. That may have been crazy. It was either Bell or Ochi. These uh, Walsh jerseys, the font of the numbers is not favorable for broadcasters. I think it was Bell. I will back you up on that one hundred foot and Trey Bell could move once he catches that ball that junior, six foot one seventy five. But it ends up being a loss after all that mm -hmm. back to the uh, seventeen yard line. And NATO sucked the defense in nicely, yeah. which you have to do on that little screen, but it didn't work. So it's now third down and twelve for Walsh Jesuit now at the right hash at the Bengals seventeen. We've got no score, seven thirty to play, first quarter. Matt Nadal ready. Gets that snap. Under pressure. Here comes Jennings. Rolls right at the 20. Keeps it inside the 15 and gets taken down at the 14-yard line. Uh, Kareem Jennings didn't get a sack there, but he certainly affected the play. It's fourth down, and we will see Cooper Curta into attempt to field goal. One thing that Walsh says they're going to be talking about on the sideline with Coach Alexander, the coaches up in the booth, is that they've got to move quickly on offense. Quick handoffs, quick strikes, because there's two, three Bengals in the backfield each and every down. Ball will be spotted at the 21. It's a 31-yard field goal attempt. Ball is down. Curtis' kick is up. It's got the distance, and it is good. Walsh Jesuit... Connects on a Cooper Kerr to field goals with 6.43 to play in the first quarter to take a 3 to nothing lead. And, you know, when you talk about these two teams and their recent history, certainly from week one and, and already from tonight, the kicking game is going to be essential. The reason one, you know, the, the play, the game ended at Walsh Jesuit in week one in double overtime because of a blocked extra point. And we've already had a blocked field goal attempt uh, by Walsh Jesuit blocking Benedictine earlier here in this game tonight. 31 yarder on that, Dino? 31 yarder. Yep. Nicely. No doubt. And again, if it comes down to kickers, both schools could rely on both of their kickers. Of course, Curta, who just nailed that 31 yarder. And I love Christian Clore. You want to talk about a guy who could punt the football? He'll give you hang time, he'll give you distance, he'll give it to you all. Well, and we were talking uh, Yvonne Shuron, who was the kicker last year for uh, Benedictine. He's already uh, doing great things at Division Three Williams College. They, 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 do well. yeah. they do well with the special teams for the Bengals. 
It's an important part of the game. Absolutely. You know what? Chico Kyle will never forget the 2011, the last championship for Ignatius, when they hoisted the trophy. Offensive player, defensive player, special teams player. That's it. Marvin Conkle back deep to receive this kick from That's a Kurta, And it's going to angle to the right. And Conkle's got it at the 10-yard line. He'll take it ahead to the 20. Breaks the tackle, 25. He goes to the 30. Still on his feet. Oh, he's got a great block to the 40. Conkle to the 50. Out to the right sideline. Cuts back at the 40. Still on his feet. And Marvin will finally be brought down at the 34-yard line. A brilliant kick return by Marvin Conkle. And Benedictine, for the second time in this first quarter, will start in Walsh Jesuit territory. I don't know if you noticed that, but Cooper Curta, who was laying back, came over to help make the tackle. But let me tell you something Marvin Conkle did. For most of the time on kickoff returns, unless your name is Josh Cribbs or Eric <laughs> Metcalf, what you have to do is stick that ball right up in the middle, right up the gut. He caught it on the far sidelines, yeah. immediately angled to the middle of the field to get his blockers... And I'll tell you, I, 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 they'll, they'll see the films tomorrow. Whoever made that block to spring Conkle on the outside, it's an outstanding job. Oh, yeah, he should. He, he gets lunch for the next week at the Academy Tavern. All right. <laughs> Offset eye in the backfield. They can up. Yarbrough to throw. Sets one up deep left, and it is incomplete. The 10-yard line. And that was incomplete. I'm trying to see who the intended receiver was. It was a different receiver than I've, we've seen from Benedictine. I'll tell was that you. Luke, was that Luke Reed the intended receiver? I think it was. Yeah, my friend, it certainly was Luke yeah. Reed. 5'10", 175 pound sophomore. He was single yeah. cover, too, and Yarbrough noted that. He saw it immediately. Javion Baker now acting as running back with Jackson injured. Baker will get the carry, springs it out left side. Oh, he's going to be brought down in the backfield for a loss. Casey Kish. Knifed in from his linebacker spot for Walsh Jesuit to make the TFL back at the 37-yard line. And that's a fine you, play by Kish. Why that was a phenomenal play by Kish because there was a blocker out in front who had obliterated. I was waiting to use that word tonight. Yes. Okay, obliterated a Walsh Jesuit defender, and Kish just knifed in to get to him. Third and 12. That's a loss of two for Benedictine back at the Walsh 37. Yarbrough rolling right now. Throws back left. Looking. Throws in double coverage. Looking for a flag as he was trying to get at the Conkle at the five-yard line. But he was well defended just like on that previous series munch. And it sets up now a fourth and long. Now, you've got Greer, of course. You've got, uh, you know, uh, uh, Boyd. But Conkle's the guy you want to stop if you want to stop that passing game. And... I tell you, I think Jared Good is looking at it, saying, okay, it's 4th and 12 at the Walsh 37. Let's try to pin the Warriors deep here and let our defense go to work. So Christian Cora will punt it away. And Cora gets, like I said, hang time. He's got a good, uh, good feel for the ball, too. See if he gets it in that coffin corner. Good snap. Cora will try to pin it right. Ball will bounce at the 20. Ooh, but it takes a Benedictine bounce, and it'll be fielded right at the 20-yard line. You know, so it's only a 17-yard part. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't want that, and uh, I know the core doesn't want that either. Uh, interesting uh, happening so far. Both teams kind of just parried. I thought it was going to be like a uh, Holyfield bow right in the middle of the ring and start throwing my It may the still. It, it may <laughs> still. It, you know, it's funny. I'm looking over at the light tower here at Ely Stadium. Uh, w you know, for about an hour or so, we got here, it was just a, a, a pretty good mist and rain here, but the rains have seemed like they've kind of lightened up a little Dino, bit. Dino, come on. You're in Lorraine County. I wasn't going to let it rain for this football no, game. No, absolutely not. <laughs> All right, so the Warriors will start right at the 20-yard line, leading it 3 to nothing, and they'll go on the ground and first down. They'll counter to Bremner to the 25, and Bremner will be knocked out of bounds near the 29-yard line. Darrell Bettingfield on the stop, but Bremner picks up 9. Tell you what, the junior... Kind of started this year as the third running back in this uh, Walsh Jesuit Two attack. Two go down, but, and what do you yeah, do? Yeah, the lost Rumpel, Crenshaw, and uh, Bremner and Romanini have kind of done a nice job carrying the load. Second and one. Shotgun for Matt Nadel. He's got both Romanini and Bremner in the backfield. This time it's going to be Romanini, and uh, needed to get to the 30, and I think on a second effort. Jack does so, and it will be a first down. Interesting note, Bengals are putting five across in the box just to start the play. A couple of guys are fading in between the two tackles, bouncing back out, trying to get into those gaps between the center and the guard. But they're lining up with five on that defensive line of scrimmage. Move it up to the 31, so Romanini gets two on that play. 5.06 to go in the first quarter. Here's Nadal to throw. Shoots one left side, and it's incomplete. Trying to hit Christian Ochi on the outside. 
And he was pretty well defended by Terrell Greer. Oh, great coverage by Greer. You know, we, we talk about that on both sides of the field because, you know, these are young athletes. I know that they're football players that are very, very good programs, but they're not the easiest thing in the world to take somebody one-on-one. -on -one, I don't care at what level. 3 nothing. Walsh Jesuit on top here. Again, with just over five minutes to play in this opening quarter in Illyria. Dave DiNatale, Mark Munch Bishop on the WKYC Game of the Week. Shotgun for Matt Nadel. It's a second down and nine. And looks like almost like a busted play there. He countered it to Bremner, and Bremner will get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Everything was starting right and then coming back left, but it looked like not everybody was on the same page there and ended up being a half-yard gain, really, if that, for Justin Bremner. Very impressive. Uh, not only are the, the four down linemen from Benedictine getting off their, their blockers, they got much smaller blockers, but penetrating, but still they're moving to the football. Bettingfield showing blitz here on a third and long trips right for the Warriors. And here he comes, back to throw Nadal, flushed. He'll run to the 35 and then get taken down at the 36-yard line, well short of the first down. Deshaun Laster amongst those over to make the hit on Nadal. He'll get a couple running it, but it'll be fourth down and about five in a punting situation for the Warriors. And we're saying, I tell you what, Munch, we're seeing... You know, after seeing the two teams combine for about 70 points in week one back in August, a few defenses have really stood out here so far in this game. You, know, you think of these schools that I think of on offense is the first thing with NATO and Yarborough, but again, the defense have been brilliant for both sides. Yeah, Herber lead a punt. Good high kick. And it is going to bounce inside the 30. Benedictine will let it go inside the 20, inside the 10. And it is going to finally roll to a stop at about the six yard line. Munch Law, if you're inside the 10 catching a punt, you don't catch it. Or you catch it, you just you let it hit and roll in. Right. You don't touch it. But if the ball is going to hit in just around the 28, 29 yard line, catch Go get the it. ball. Yeah. yeah. You got to catch it. And you saw what happened there. You got what, uh, 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 12 yard, 4, 4 50 yard roll on it? Yes. At least. If not more. So Benedictine will be backed up here at their own six to start their third possession of this first quarter. More like a 23 yard roll on that one. Dean, I'm so good to be out uh, for high school football uh, playoff action. Looking at the stands, uh, I think the weather kept some away at first, but uh, the Bengals had their student section rip roaring. Yeah, Walsh's, Walsh's uh, fans on the far side, on the visitor side anyway, it looks like they've they've come in full force. Yes, they have. Baker will get the carry on first down. He'll surge out to the seven and then gets pushed back. So only about a yard or so for JVM Baker. It's a second down and nine. And this was an unusual place to have this game here. Um, you know, for Benedictine, a Cleveland team, you know, and then you've got a Summit County team in Walsh Jesuit from Stowe and Cuyahoga Falls. It's a long ride for both schools. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would consider Benedictine to be an east side base, yes. East, east base squad. Yes. You know, interesting, too, the Bengals ran to the short side of the field and are on that side of the field on that hash. Yeah. They've got a lot of space and a lot of speed to use to the open side. On the left hash, Baker again. This time runs left. Got a good block out to the 10. He gets to the 25. Baker down the sideline. There's a flag down, I believe. Baker going to go all the way down the left side to the 30, to the 20, and gets knocked out of bounds right about at the 23-yard line. It's coming back to Yeah, you. I was to say, though, I, I think this is going to come back. Because that flag came down right about when Baker had gotten to the outside at the 25-yard line. Benedictine quickly down here. Are they not? Munch, was there not a flag there? I, I know. I see what you saw over there, but uh, no flag. The flag appeared as soon as he turned the corner, which means which mean what? A hold. Right. <laughs> that allowed him to turn the corner. But, but uh, the play stands. Yeah. Baker will get a breather, and Luke Reed will check in now at running back. You know, talk about playing their angles. The Walsh defender played his angle perfectly to get Baker out of bounds. Reed goes in motion left. Yarbrough looks in that direction, then pops one over the middle. It is caught by Boyd inside the five, and he drags a couple tacklers into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. 25 yards, Yarbrough to Brandon Boyd to put the Bengals on top, 6-3. to three. You know, you talk about the receiving core for Benedictine. Conkle's name comes up, Greer's name comes up, but Brandon Boyd, 34 receptions, only one behind Conkle on the season. Eighth touchdown of the season for him, if you want to call, you know, put the regular season in there, too. Boy, this drive ends up being a 94-yard touchdown drive. The bulk of it... Gained by Javion Baker's run. Here's the extra point for Cora. Ball is down. Kick is up. Kick is good. A two-play, 94-yard <laughs> touchdown drive. 
do the math, so you had a 25-yard touchdown pass, so it ends up being a 69-yard run by Javion Baker to help set up Benedict, and we thought that might be coming back. No hold, and it ends up helping out the Bengals big time, 7-3. Bengals with 2.36 to play here in this opening quarter. Something important, too, with that Baker run. You think of the Bengals offense, <laughs> you think of Jackson running sure. the football and the rhythm that they have. Well, Baker just showed, you know what, hey, you know what, young fella? Went right to him on the bench after. I'm going to make sure I... You know, I do I do you righteous when I'm in here running the football. And speaking of the aforementioned Dwayne Jackson, I believe that is him down on a golf cart. Um down on the, the sideline They just moved him from the bench to the cart, which means they're taking him off, and yeah. uh, he's headed to uh, Illyria General. Yeah, he's headed to Mercy. He's yeah. probably headed to Mercy, Mercy Health, yeah. the, uh, the, the, the sponsor of this uh, field. Mercy Health Field at Ely Stadium. Brand, it really, I say brand new because it's my first time being here, but it's a, it's a three-year-old okay. facility, and it's uh, really, really impressively done here. You could have fooled me. It looks like we just had a lid lifter tonight. I know, right? Yeah, how things change quickly. Another squib kick for Core, fielded by Bell at the 11. He'll get to the 25. He finds an opening to the 30, and down to about the 33, and then lost the ball again. But let's see. Do they say it's – I think they're going to say this time he was down. Oh. Almost Wait. another fumbled kick by Trey Bell. Bell's got to hold on to that. Yes, football. he does. And it's, it happened almost at the same time, Munch, as he was on his way down. That time his knee touched, where on the initial kick it did not. And Walsh Jesuit will have the ball at their own 32, now trailing 7-3. to three. You know, and something, too, on the special teams, if they feel and they see a guy is not going to handle the football with the authority, they're going to be going for that ball, too. Every well time. Attack. Oh, yes. Ochi and Gardner out wide left. There'll be four wide receivers here for the Warriors from their own 32. Natal rolls left. He pops it left, and the pass is incomplete, broken up by Terrell Greer on the pass intended for Ochi. It'll be second down and 10. I got to tell you something. Greer is six foot 170. You're saying, okay, nice height there. Not that heavy, but he plays much bigger than even his size. Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. 2.22 to go, first quarter, 7-3, to three, Benedict, and after the touchdown pass from Yarborough to Boyd. How about Ochi? 38 receptions, 705 yards, 7 touchdowns on the year. He's in motion. He'll get it on the jet sweep, running to the right to the 35, and gets knocked out of bounds on the far side near the 39-yard line. Pretty nice good game. game there, yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, because the short side of the field, that's where they ran it. You would think that he wouldn't get that much, but he turned it up. He, he turned it on a dime and then headed right along the sideline. This is his first carry of the season. Mm -hmm. That was a good one there. Third down, and gave him six. Third down and four. Bremner will run to the right and stretch out and should. Well, let's say I, sh I, I thought he had stretched out to the first down marker. Uh, they're going to move it up to the 42, and that should be enough. Okay. Initially, I wasn't sure they were going to give it to him or not. If you want some size. There it goes. Bremner, though, gets yeah. the first down. On, on the Walsh line, you got Brand Horse at 6'3", 235, and Cleveland is 6'205". Again, I'm giving you those weights right. That that is where their their bigger their bigger linemen are on that side of the line. Fake handoff, Nadal to throw right. He's got a man wide open. Pass caught to the 30, down to the 20, 15, 10 to the 5, and touchdown, Walsh Jesuit. 58-yard touchdown pass. Got to bust out the glasses to see who made that catch. A 58-yard touchdown pass, and the Warriors respond 9-7. to seven. Dino, 51 seconds later, they got the job done. Borrow your... Uh, That's why I have them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Bell on that. Was it... I believe it was Bell on that catch. It was. And do you know what? Why did they go to Bell? Just to get him a little bit of confidence. There yeah, he, he needed it. Up two of those kickoff returns. Well, and you see the speed there. And I apologize. I didn't see him there on the far side there. But uh, it was Trey Bell on the touchdown catch. 58 yards. Here's the extra point for Curta. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. 10-7, Walsh Jesuit. How about that? Jab, uppercut, <laughs> and then come back with a roundhouse. And you know what? There you go. I was going to say, well, when are they going to get in the middle of the ring and start throwing punches? There you <laughs> go. I said it, they did. Yep. Oh, my. I mean, we've seen literally now uh, a 69-yard run by Baker, followed by a 25-yard touchdown pass from Yarbrough to Boyd, and then 58 yards on the flip side, Nadal to Bell. 
Am I going to need my abacus here? Uh, abacus for the scoring today? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it's called? <laughs> oh, my. Well, again, 10 eight, 7. 10 7. 145 to go in the first quarter. You know, this field is a fast field, too, even with the rain. Yeah, so I agree with you. Pretty good, drained it nicely. A uh, beautiful, beautiful. It's got a uh, little bit of a sponge feel to it. It's not that fuzzy concrete that uh, we've had it some. <laughs> you know, if this were the old Ely Stadium, though, I mean, it would, it would it'd be, be muddy. It'd be muddy by now. <laughs> There are, you know, and I, I mentioned it last week after watching Olmstead Falls. They're going to have a new stadium next year with a new field turf and everything. It's not going to be the same. It won't know? be. It won't be. But it, it, there, there's so many, so few stadiums, especially in Cuyahoga County now, that have that don't have field turf. And you know what? And again, when they put it in Avon Lake, my home community, then you start talking to even at the time, Dave and Lugas, he goes, hold on. We've got three football programs that play here. We have two soccer teams that play yeah, here. We you have gotta field have hockey. It. We have lacrosse. As here comes Conkle again to the 30. Oh, breaks another tackle and dives ahead to the 40-yard line. Didn't quite take it as long as he did in the last one, but Conkle will set up his team well at their own 41-yard line with a minute 36. They tried to squib it to give, the, give them a, a shot to get down there for Conkle, and he still made a big run back there. And that was a great one-on-one -on -one tackle that time by the special team player for Walsh. Got up the field before he can get his number, but he, he got around the ankles and took him down. Conkle probably had another 15, 20 yards in him. Boyd will go out with uh, Patterson wide left. And then you're going to have Greer over here wide right. Baker, who had that 69-yard run in it running back. Dwayne Jackson is out for the rest of the game after suffering an injury. As the throw left side caught at the 45-yard line to the 50 and into Walsh territory over to the 48-yard line. A first down, Dana. As a first down, as Boyd on the catch. Once again, uh, weapons galore on both sides of the field. Boyd's a good one. A senior, six foot, one hundred seventy-three pounds. You know, rangy. You got a six foot. You got Conkle at uh, you know who's also up there, and Greer at six foot. Definitely, no one is uh, size uh, challenged. Yarbrough looking for Greer, making the nice catch inside the thirty. Dives ahead to the twenty-five yard line, and then falls down there. Nobody touched him for Walsh, but he's down at the twenty-four yard line. Terrell Greer with the catch. You know, pick your poison, Greer, Conkle, Boyd. Boyd. You know, and then you bring in Patterson, who's got good speed. It was interesting, too, because of the DB that time. I think it was uh, Blackwell just kind of stayed away, didn't want the receiver to get past him. Baker stands behind Yarbrough. Bengals on the move. They've got Jennings at tight end. He'll go in motion right to left, first and 10. And now it is Conkle in motion. They'll give to Baker on the counter to the 20. And, oh, it gets a high hit. It was taken down to the 19-yard line. You hear some ooze there in front of us. And that'll be a gain of about six as we close in on 30 seconds to play first quarter. 10-7, Walsh Jesuit on top. I'll tell you that Casey Kish is a player, the middle linebacker. Yes, he is. 5'11", 195, hits much bigger than that. Bengals with 20 on the game clock, 24 on the play clock, and they're just going to let the first quarter clock expire and head to the other side of the field. One quarter in the books here at Mercy Health Field at Ely Stadium. Walsh Jesuit, 10 Benedict in seven, as we'll be looking at a second down in about five. On the flip side, Tyler Carey will have us some uh, scores here in just a moment as we get ready for I'm the second quarter. I'm excited to find out what's going on oh, here. He, he, Ignatius Medina? We were TC and I were talking. It's like, you know, obviously we want to know what's happening with Hoban and Nordonia because the winner of this game will play the winner of that game next week. But, you know, those Region 1 games are obviously of, of interest. I, I, I'm curious that Avon and Olmstead Falls in uh, Region 6. Don't count Olmstead Falls. No. Know, but, you know, Avon they were really they played, yes. they played a brilliant game last week at Barberton. You know, it's interesting, too, because a quick little story for you. When Nordonia was playing Benedictine, Joe Chavone, the former Twinsburg coach. Yeah. Well, Joe also was a star football player for the Benedictine Bengals. His son, Vinny Chavone, plays for Norvonia yes, now. Yes, he does. Before the game, I called Joe. And Megan Chavone, actually Megan Grabowski Chavone, one of the great basketball players from ah. Trinity High School, is the mom. I said, it's a small world, but How hard was it, Megan? She goes, it wasn't hard at all rooting for Norvonia. I said, come on. There had to be a little part of it because her, her dad, uh, uh, one of the dear friends, Jerry Grabowski, uh, passed away. 
away a few years back, but she said it was easy rooting for her son. Ball at the 19. It's a second down, and we'll call it a long four. Yarbrough in the pistol. Baker behind him with three wide receivers. I think they've got actually Reed over now. No, nope, that's Jennings. He goes in motion. Yarbrough will give it on a long give to Baker. Swinging left side inside the 20 to the 15 and out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. And that should be very close to another first down. Scores, Munchie. Hoban leads Nordonia in the first quarter, 14-7. to Avon on top of Olmstead Falls in the second quarter, 14-7. to Highland leading Toledo Central Catholic. I may have been totally wrong about this. 17 to nothing in the first this quarter. This Hornets team has some sting in them, I'll tell you. Yeah, they Best do. team in about a decade there. Yeah. Green shutting out Worcester uh, in this region, 7-14 to nothing. Maslin over Big Walnut, 7 to nothing in the second. That's in region Seven more scores here coming up. I formation now in the backfield. They'll go to Baker again. Oh, he got stood up. Short and he got stood up. Munch is exactly right. Oof. Over on the left hash. He had to get inside the 15 and it was not a favorable spot on the previous play. And it's going to be fourth and short. John Paul Fida was there, the whole defensive line, plus uh, uh, Grogan and Romanini came up from the linebacker spots and put their noses, put their noses right on the football. Bengals will go Yarbrough to keep it, and falling ahead, he should have the first down. I say he should. I've been wrong before. Zach, he didn't even need Zach, a yard, though. Looked yeah, like he needed like, yeah, a footer. It is a first down. Zach Grogan was trying to say, no, it's not a first down. In Division One, Region One, Menor leads St. Ignatius 7 to nothing in the first quarter. St. Edward Island, leads. I mean, Medina over St. Ignatius? Yeah, yeah. Medina. Did I say Menor? Yeah, I'm sorry. Medina over uh, St. Ignatius 7 to nothing, and St. Edward leading uh, McKinley 14 to nothing. As Yarbrough on first down, rolls right, stops, cuts back left, throws back left. Oh, it's incomplete. Oh, he had Jennings wide open and could not connect at the eight-yard line. And that's a target of 6'4", 230 oh, yeah. pounds. Just kind of throwing across his body there, Munch, and just could not get an accurate pass there. It will be second down and 10 at the 14-yard line of Walsh with 11.07 to play in the first half. Knowing the kind of competitor C.J. Yarborough is, I expect to see that play again I soon. would think so. Yes. Especially the way how wide open Jennings was on that play. Reed and Baker are both in the backfield now, along with quarterback C.J. Yarborough and three wide receivers. Second and 10 for Benedictine. Here's Yarborough with time. Fires. In zone. Oh, his receiver slipped incomplete. He had a man there, and I think it was Conkle. And it was triple coverage, he was, too. He, he was, threw it, too, yeah. He threw it in coverage, but he, he thought he had a window, and then Conkle slipped in the end zone, and it's incomplete, setting up a third down and 10. Very, very important game. Uh, uh, Nick Herbally. Yeah. The punter, yeah, also over there playing strong safety, doing a great job of helping out his teammates. Three defenders were there on that pass. I mean, that's the thing, Munch, with the exception of the, the touchdown to Boyd, I mean, all these, there have been receivers for Benedict and well covered every time for Walsh Jesuit here. Third and long, Conkle in motion. They give it to Baker, and he dropped the handoff. There's a wild melee for the ball. I think Walsh Jesuit Walsh may have it. That was a football. They do at the 22-yard line. Trying to give it uh, just on a, a draw to JV on Baker, and it just wasn't a clean connection. Baker dropped the ball. Yarbrough tried to get it back, and it was Walsh Jesuit coming away with the football. First and 10 Warriors at their own 22-yard line. We're, we're, we're right next to the Walsh coaches, <laughs> and you, you, you feel the emotion, the slam. It's like, yeah, we did it. I believe and Rogers it, came away with that football, too. Yes. Well, we've called Tyron's number a couple times yes, we have. already in this first half for one good most, place. One of the most important players on that defense because of his size, because most of the other defenders are undersized. When you're looking at the Benedictine line that's going to come charging Adel sends him. Bell in motion, flips to him. Here's a, here comes the uh, jet sweep. Bell will get to the 25, and that's about yeah. it. Got about three on that run. It'll bring up a second down and eight. Mike Hatcher amongst those over to make the stop on the far side, and we've got an official's timeout. You know, it's interesting, too, because both teams seem to be working the short side of the field yeah. more. And uh, I don't know why that would be to their advantage, but uh, both sides are doing it. Looking over here. and Okay, so after Bell made that run, he, he ended up being injured. And it happened right about at the sideline where he went out. And thus the reason why. 
we've got the stoppage. It was over on that far side. As Munch said, uh, everything going to the yeah, that short side of the field for both teams here this far in this first half. 10.40 to go, second quarter. Walsh Jesuit 10, Benedictine 7. It's the Division II uh, Region 5 semifinal. Munch, how about this? We have something new this year. Let's we have a sponsor. The WKYC High School Football Game of the Week is presented by Chick-fil-A. Yes, Chick-fil-A, home of the original chicken sandwich. Make sure you get your to your neighborhood Chick-fil-A in Cleveland, Akron, or Canton. Do you prefer the pickle on the chicken sandwich, yes or no? Oh, yes, 100%. You and, you and, you and Dennis Manilov are both yeses. Oh, 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 no. yeah. <laughs> Here comes a middle screen. <laughs> Romanini at the 25, got a block to the 30. Still on his feet to the 40-yard line. And they're going to put Jack down at the 42-yard line. That's a first down for Walsh Jesuit. He wasn't going to go out of bounds on that. He was nope. going to get every yard that he could, especially with 10.25 left and a half, and they're up by three. But that gets... Your pickle uh, off the sandwich. Yes, I, I, I do without the pickle. And that's rather radical there, Mr. Dinatelli. I know it is, but that's... Yeah, that's, that's You're a rebel. You're living I on am. the edge. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, Mr. Straight and Narrow, as I pride myself, squarest guy in Northeast Ohio. Now here's Bremner with a big hole to the 40. He's to the 30. Bremner with one man to beat. 15, 10, 5, and tripped up just short of the goal line, down near the one-yard line. Justin Bremner, the 190-pound junior, sets his team up first down and goal near the one-yard line. That's about a 56-yard run. Was I talking about big plays? And that came behind Dom game. Fallon and Joey Passarello, 200 and 215 pounds. They just blew a hole for him. And meanwhile, though, on, on first and goal at the one, Benedictine went on the ground back to Bremner. He got no break and ended up getting knocked down back at the five, but a late flag after the play, and it's on Benedictine. Interesting to note. Was it a face mask? I think it was 12 men on the field, Munch, because, it, because Walsh Jesuit went right to the ball. Yeah, it was too many men on the field against the Bengals. And there was still, the 12th man was still standing there. Yeah, you're right. Had, so he had no you're idea. Right. So the loss will be negated. Exactly. By the miscue, yes. And the ball is going to be basically about as close to the goal line as you can. So Romanini's uh, loss won't be a loss. Actually, it was Bremner. Bremner and Romanini both in the backfield. First and goal at the one. The give. Jack Romanini to the left, and he'll surge in. Where's the lead? There it is. Touchdown, Walsh Jesuit. You know, no need to do anything fancy there. Just give it to one in the back. She had, what, four downs to go from, the one, from, the, from less than one yard? Yeah, make it easy on yourself. Jack Romanini with his 11th touchdown of the year. And Walsh Jesuit now opens up a 16-7 lead with 9.33 to go here in the first half. Interesting that the Walsh Jesuit continues to attack and they continue to thrive off the big play. It has been a circus of big plays really since about the two or three minute mark of the first quarter. High snap, it's pulled down nicely and that kick is up and good by Cooper Kerr to credit Nate Ost, the holder, for doing a good job to pull down that ball and get it through there. 17 to seven, Walsh Jesuit in the lead with 9.33 to go first half. Another Tyler Carey tidbit. Uh, Walsh Jesuit's girls soccer team lost today in the Division I state championship game. They lost to Mount Notre Dame 4-1. to one. You know what? Very, very classy. Uh, uh, Mr. Ertl, who is uh, the president of Walsh Jesuit yes. High School, one of his students at one time was Ryan Risner, who is the president of uh, Benedictine High School. Oh, wow. Got a note today that Ryan called... Paul Ordle to wish him and his uh, the soccer team nothing but the best. I mean, a lot of camaraderie up here. Oh, there's no question. And uh, yeah, we were down there uh, for that game, and he came up to me uh, as we were getting ready to broadcast, and just was you know couldn't have been nicer and um, just class. And 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 you know we've I've done enough Benedictine games over the last couple of years to understand there how classy that school and that administration is, and it's. You know, it's why you know when, when a game like this comes up on on the schedule for a playoff game, it's a it's an easy choice. Mm -hmm. It really is, to be honest. The mob rules. Mob yeah. men of Benedictine. Yep. Sopranos have nothing to do with that, Bob. That's <laughs> seventeen to seven. Walsh Jesuit in the lead. Benedictine will have Marvin Conkle, who's had already two good kick returns in this game, back deep to receive. But the the Bengals have had their issues in the red zone, and. 
That's why they're trailing as much as anything else, 17-7. to A blocked field goal and then a fumble. As this kick will be angled away from Conkle, Patterson's going to watch it trickle out of bounds. And the Bengals will start at the 35. We've got one flag, two flag, three flags down. You get a flag. You get a flag. You get a flag. Now, did you need three flags for the ball going out of bounds? I don't think so. That's why I, I was so surprised by that. Now, it, was there any kind of extracurricular activity? I was looking. It's the first thing I looked for, and I didn't see any. I didn't either. Unless you, somebody you, were talking you, about you, going you, for pizza after. I mean, you would think in a kick that was clearly going out of bounds that you you wouldn't have any kind of contact that would necessitate a flag, but... I mean, it, like I said, I mean, it, it was flags all over the place. One official is going to go talk to Nick Alexander, who's about five yards on the field for Walsh Jesuit. Now, you got to remember, these aren't your home fields, so I don't think they're allowed to, uh, the coaches out to the center. No, the and, and, and that's, been, that's been something we've, we've noticed and watched over these last couple of weeks. And this is, you know, as you said, it's a good point. We're starting now into neutral territory here for the rest of this postseason. Offsides against Walsh Jesuit is the penalty call procedure. And we got a personal foul against the Bengals. Well, again, unless somebody That's carried through on their block when he didn't need to block. Yeah, to like I, I don't get that. I, I, I can't imagine. Okay. Well, now the Bengals will certainly get the worst end of that yeah. exchange as they'll have to start at 15 20. yards. Yeah. Yarbrough ready. And now we've got, I, I don't think the officials are quite convinced that the ball should be at the 20-yard line. Now well, if I think, it's a 15-yard penalty, yeah. where would it be? Right, right. Now I, think there are, now I think everybody's on the same page, I think. Jennings will shift in motion left to right. Yarbrough with an empty backfield. Looks to throw. Sets up a wide receiver screen, and nobody's home. He and Boyd were not on the same page, and it's incomplete. It'll be second down to 10. Jack Romanini, who just scored the touchdown, was over on the coverage with Nick Herberly. And Yarborough jumping up and down, yelling at the sideline, just saying, hey, give me some plays that are going to work. Yeah. That one, that one, don't, yeah, retire that one. <laughs> second down and 10. And again, same look here for the Bengals. Empty backfield, and they'll go with four wides. It's a 10-point lead for Walsh Jesuit here in the second quarter. Jennings in motion to the right, and Yarbrough's just going to keep it run to the 25. Follows his block, 30. He's to the 35 and taken down near the 40-yard line. About a gain of 20 for C.J. Yarbrough to get the Bengals out of the hole, and they've got a first down at their own 40. Very important tackle that time. Coming over to uh, uh, put the wood on him was number nine for the uh, Walsh Jesuit Warriors. Haven't seen him that much. Uh, Mason Bailey playing defensive line now, 6'4", yeah. 190 pound senior. Oh, yeah, that's got you. Yeah, there's, I was trying to look for him, too. I'm like, yeah, he's, he's there. So on a fresh set of downs, and here comes Baker on the carry. Going to run to the wide side. He's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage back at the 38-yard line. Well strung out by the Warriors. And you know who made that happen? It was Kish yeah. in the backfield, pushing him towards the other defenders. And, Char and Charlie Clug, the cornerback, mm -hmm. came over to finish it off. But you're right. Kish does his job there by maintaining his leverage and gives his teammates a chance to come over and make the play. Do you know how much difference? Is it for Benedictine with Dwayne Jackson out? We know that oh, Baker can fly, but again, we but talked rhythm. We yes. talked senior leadership. It, it, uh, it's I mean, different, Munch. It's Jackson is yeah. a junior, I'm sorry, yeah. but we just talked about, yeah, he, he, they're, they're used to him being back there. Boyd will get the bubble screen left, and he'll get a first down to the 50, to the 45 of Walsh Jesuit, and down to the 44. Good blocking downfield by his teammate Marvin Conkle. That time, the bubble screen worked, and it's a first down. Jackson is such a talented runner. Uh, you know, you might argue he's the heart and soul of the offense, mm -hmm. but he's out now, and it's going to have to be Javion Baker and the rest of this team to ride to the rescue for their teammate. They've got a first down now at the Warrior 43. Baker will move to the right of Yarborough with three wide receivers, and it'll be a bubble screen left. Holy dangerous pass, but it's caught. Here comes Conkle to the 35. Another first down and down to the 31. It was a throw to the wide side by Yarborough to Conkle, and there was a warrior over there trying to get the position, but Conkle was able to make the catch, and 
shift his way around that would-be interceptor for a first down. John Paul Fyler, the defensive end, kind of slid out because he read the play, could not make the play. I'll tell you this, too. Walsh Jesuit needs to make tackles on that first hit. If not, the Bengals players are going to spring with that speed and strength. Under eight minutes to go, second quarter. Walsh Jesuit 17, Benedict in 10 here at Ely Stadium. First and 10 at the 32 of Walsh now for Benny. And the give is to Baker. He's going to be brought down back in the backfield for a loss at the 35-yard line. Noah Brock was the first man to lead the charge for the Warriors. And you know what? Noah Brock, too, in it all. Not only he's at the left end, I've seen him make tackles far opposite side of the field. And that side, he just stayed home. And you know what? He had a fight off the 6'3", 280-pound Iliano. Loss of three on that play, second down and 13. I believe now that's Reed in the backfield for Benedictine. And they'll fake to read. Yarbrough to throw with time. Fires over the middle. Pass caught by Boyd at the 15. He goes to the 10. And inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line, where we first and goal for the Bengals. So important for the Bengals to score here. And what happened? Walsh missed a tackle for him and uh, gave him another 5 or 6 yards. They have to wrap the first time they hit him. And you know, Munch, the key there, C.J. Yarbrough had a lot of time to throw. Oh, the pocket was clean. Reed in the backfield. They'll give to him, swinging right side, and he'll be taken down pretty close to the line of scrimmage around at the eight-yard line. Reed right now is going to be the safety valve to get a blow for uh, yes. Mr. Baker, yeah. As Baker would be for Jackson. Mm -hmm. Second and goal, and I think they're going to actually move it back to the nine here, so second and goal from about, uh, no. We'll keep it at the eight, so second and goal from there. Yarbrough will go under center with three wide receivers. Jennings a tight end to the right. Reed is the lone man in the backfield and now they'll break out of the huddle here and get a new play card in. They got eight seconds to work with on the play clock. Yarbrough gets the snap. Back on the ground. Here's Reed and he'll slam his way down close to the six yard line. It'll be third and goal coming up. Trying to run behind Dinwiddie and James. Good pursuit that time. I'm looking over there. I had nine Walsh Jesuits helmets flying to that football. Yeah. Again, Munch, as you point out, the ball's at the right hash and they're running to that short side. Third and goal coming up. If you have more power, I could see why the power team would do that. But with the speed of the Bengals, too, wide side of the field's alluring. Jennings will check out, and now they'll bring in Patterson as an extra wide receiver. Third and goal, Benedictine at the six. They trail by ten. Reed to the left of Yarbrough. Fake to Reed. Yarbrough to throw. Pops to the end zone. It is incomplete. Was looking for Conkle, but he had heavy pressure. Three Warriors were in the face of Yarbrough on that particular play to affect the pass, and it'll be fourth and goal, and Christian Cora, I believe, will come in to attempt a field goal. And Walsh didn't bring six or seven that time. The three down linemen just penetrated. Yeah. They just said, hey, you know what? Pin your ears back, guys. Go get them. Cora had his first field goal attempt blocked. They'll C.J. Yarborough put this down at the 13, so this will be a 23-yard mm -hmm. attempt to try to cut into this deficit. Ball is down. Kick is up. On its way. It's perfect. 5.42 to go in the second quarter. It is now Walsh Jesuit 17, Benedictine 10. You know, an interesting note with that field goal is that this is a game, no matter what side that you're on, is that you do not want to take points off the scoreboard. Correct. You've seen that, especially with the first game in double overtime, what yeah. that was a one-point game. Is that, no, no, if, if you have a chance to score, you're going to score And tonight. you said it earlier, if you've got a good kicker, and both these teams do, you know, you're not hesitant to try, you know, a kick in the 25 to 35-yard range where maybe, you know, other teams don't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. You know, both Benedictine and Walsh Jesuit do, and both teams have had field goals here tonight. 17-10, Walsh's lead down to seven. You know, it's interesting, too, because it was 7-3 after the big Baker run, and right now, the 63-yard run and then 25-yard touchdown pass, Walsh has turned the tables. Yes. They're the team with the big plays now. Absolutely. 
We've seen a, you know, the long touchdown pass from Nadel to Bell. 58 yards. And then Bremner had the 60-plus yard run. I think it was a 63-yard run to set up the Romanini mm -hmm. touchdown a few moments ago. Kick from Cor will be fielded at about the 6. Ball is dropped. Pick back up at the 10. What is it's dangerous. Bell at the 10. He's going to be brought down shy of the 10-yard line. Uh, Trey Bell has a touchdown tonight, but his uh, kick returning, uh, it's been a nightmare for him thus far. And his team will start first and 10 right about at the 10-yard line. And that may have been a gift from the officials to spot it there. You know, it's, it's interesting, too, and I love seeing it. Bengal players immediately going down and uh, thanking the guys for, you know, getting, you know, the, the starters when they come out, the special team guys who go down making Get us that field position. Quincy yep. Johnson was down there to make a great tackle at the time for the Bengals. So the Warriors will start first and 10 at their own 10. Both teams, by the way, have all their timeouts remaining here in this first half. 17 to 10. Walsh Jesuit on top. They'll go on the ground on first down. That's Bremner. And he'll plunge forward for about a yard to the 11. And that's really about it. A sea of blue underneath to make that tackle. That's tough sledding in the middle of that line, yeah, especially too with that size disadvantage. With Ileano and McDonald, mm -hmm. you're right. You know, you've got quick linemen for Walsh Jesuit, but power blocking is not the forte of quick linemen. Second and nine. Nato on the shotgun. Romanini and Bremner to each side of him with three wide receivers. Boy, if they're going to pass, they got to make a quick pop out here because the Bengals are coming. And second and nine, Nadal fake handoff. He wants oh, to throw, and he'll be sacked back at about the three-yard line. There's the danger right there. And Benedictine had good pressure. Jacob Dolan amongst those to make that sack. It will be third and long back. We'll see where they'll spot this at about the three-yard line. So... It's going to be about a third and 17. Boy, Dolan in there, 5'5", 140-pound middle linebacker. It looks like somebody's uh, little brother who's out yeah. there playing, but he doesn't play that way. Third and 17. Oh, now I bring the house again, you know. Yeah, yeah you got to bring the house And again. we got a flag down, too. Well, and I think for the second time in this first half, Bengals jumped. Bengals were a little antsy to get to the quarterback. I'll give them five and yards all at third and seventeen. Yeah, now it's third and twelve. To put the fear to maker in you. What's that? To put the fear to maker. I would. Yes. Oh, heck yes. But the the key is you better not allow, allow a thirteen yard pass here. No. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's Chad Henney, a thirteen yard run on third and fourteen. That's right. Nadal to throw back from his own end zone. Fires one deep left. That's going to be intercepted. Boyd's got it at the twenty to the ten. Inside to the five and out of bounds at about the three yard line. Oh, he threw that up for grabs and Brandon Boyd said thank you very much. And you First know, and goal, Benedictine. You can't throw it up for grabs when you're back that far, no. especially Boyd, the safety, doing what he's supposed to do. What is it? Play center field. That's it. He saw the ball and went and got it. I think, he was, play the I other think way. he was looking for Bell over on that far side on a similar play that they got the touchdown on. But Bell was covered nicely. Bell was so well oh. covered, and Boyd read it beautifully. That ball like with Michael the on him, yeah. Yeah. First and goal for the Bengals. Now an opportunity for them to tie this football game. As Baker will check in at running back, Conkle out wide right, and Boyd, after that interception, will go wide left. Bettingfield and Jennings in as double tights. First and goal, Baker gets the carry. Baker punches to the end zone. That's a touchdown for Benedictine. Why would you do anything but what they did? A power run with a size differential there and just quick hit and bang. That's exactly what he did. Actually went between the center of the guard. Nothing fancy at all. JV on Baker's fifth touchdown of the year. Pulls Benedict into within one, 17 to 16 with 3.58 to go in the first half. Here's Cora for the extra point to tie the game. My, how quickly things change both sides here tonight. Extra point is up on its way. High ball game. 3.58 left in the half. Bengals have scored the last two touchdowns. And once again, you know, they didn't want to fool around. No. We got the ball, put it right in on the first play, and go from there. And both these teams, Munch, have been opportunistic with the FIPS, with the fumbles, interceptions, and penalties. And that time, Boyd's interception turns into a touchdown. We've seen that both sides here in this football game tonight. Mistakes have come back to haunt. 
And now we're back to square one, tied up at 17. I was shocked, and Matt Nadal, as good as they get, all right? Yes. I was shocked he threw that one up for grabs. And actually, I was shocked they tried a deep pass because you know that they have to run quick things because of the the, the Bengals, the way they're charging through the the lighter line of the offensive line. Yeah, when you're at your own eight-yard line, Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't spell well. And that's something, you know, Nick Alexander talked about all off season and into the season that you know they had to you know cut down on on the, those kinds of mistakes that you know you know when the quarterback comes off the field and says boy I, I knew better I shouldn't have thrown that and you know that, that's one Matt's going to regret here is that kick from Cora will be fielded at about the two yard line here comes Trey Bell out to the fifteen he's to the twenty he's got to the to the thirty he's to the forty and Bell breaks the tackle down the left sideline to the thirty he's still on his feet. Oh, I got him tripped up by Christian Cora oh. at the twenty two yard line. Uh, Trey Bell is going to feel good about that one after having a couple of rough uh, kick returns earlier in this game a fumble including on one of them, he comes back with a brilliant return for the Warriors. Definition of redemption? Two words. Trey Bell. You saw it right then and there. And Cora, how about that? The kicker getting over there to save a touchdown. You know, you don't want your kickers usually putting their head into the meat grinder, but Cora had to do it to save the touchdown that time. And Matt Nadel and company, right off of that turnover, will be back on offense here. With a chance to retake the lead, Nadal gives Romanini to the 20. Flag goes down as Jack goes down at about the 16-yard line. At least I thought I saw a flag. Maybe I didn't. Over on the far side there. Romanini. No, there is a power flag. Yeah. No, no, there is a flag. Okay, my eyes weren't deceiving me. You know, Romanini all over the place on defense and on offense, too. He's one of those guys you depend on. Munch, that's a sideline, another sideline warning. On the, the Bengals. Well, you know, there are there's a line the team needs to stay behind, and uh, there's an area that uh, the team needs to stay in, and if not, they're going to keep an eye on them, especially in the playoffs. All right, so second down and about three. Romanini gets seven on first down. This time he gets the carry again, and he gets dragged down by Jacob Dolan behind the line of scrimmage. Loss Back of five? to the 16. Oh, just loss of one. And, and and I keep pointing out because I just treasure these young men. You know, mainly, too, in sixth grade, Coach had to put his foot on the scale for me to make weight for the St. Henry Golden Knights. But Dolan at 5'5", five, five, 140, you couldn't tell. He's like a heat-seeking missile. Kish is in as the other back, along with Romanini. Two receivers right side for Walsh Jesuit. It's a third down now and five. Ball is back at the Benedictine 17. 2.45 to go here in the second quarter in a 17-all game. Here's Romanini again. Cuts inside the 15, takes it to the 13, but he's going to be a little bit short of the first down, and it's going to set up a fourth down and short decision here for Nick Alexander. Do you know what? But I said earlier, you do not want to take any points off the board in a football game like this. Do you know what do you have it at? Boy, they're going they're going right to yeah. it. Fourth and short. Romanini again. And he needed to get inside the 12, and I believe he did. He got down to about the 11 and a half. Yep. Should be enough for a first down for Romanini. And yep, the officials say move the chains, first down. And do you know what the key to that play was? They hurried it up. Yep. I don't think the Bengals' defense was set, but you got to be set. That's on them. Yeah, same formation. Kish to the left of Matt Nadel. Romanini to the right. Two receivers to the right. First and ten. Nadel rolling right. Looking right. Throws right. And it is incomplete at about the two-yard line. Throwing it over, over on the uh, far side. And the intended receiver, was that Ochi? That was Christian Ochi. Okay. A great one-on-one coverage once again by the Bengals. The Bengals trust their cornerbacks to give them one-on-one coverage. Actually, it was a safety roll over there that time for the Bengals. It was uh, Brandon Boyd. We've said his name quite a bit on defense today. In motion, I think that's Marshall. And the give is going to be Romanini to the left. He's inside the 10. Pushes the pile ahead down to about the 7, maybe the 6-yard line. And finally, Benedictine will swarm him back from there. But uh, give Jack about 6 on that carry. They, they being Walsh Jesuit, can get a first down here. If they get down to the 2-yard line inside the 2, it'll be a first down. And Munch, they're doing a good job working the clock, too. Because remember, Benedictine will start the second half with the football. Mm-hmm. We're down to a minute 35 to play here in the second quarter. Both teams have all all the timeouts remaining, by the way. Third down and five for the Bengals at the seven. We've got a timeout taken by the Bengals. 
You used it one of What do you do here if you're Walsh Jesuit? You know, I don't I don't throw the football. I, I don't just, think so either. I much. work I work Romanini. He's been the power runner yeah. here so far. Yeah, he's been the workhorse on this drive. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. I would I would stay with what you're doing. They've brought in Kish to be kind of that blocking back. So I I, I think it's worked for you. And you're not going to just take a, a, a one step and pop the ball with a bigger uh, Bengals lineman in there, too. I wouldn't face. think so. No. I wouldn't think so. Anthony Iliano will check back in on that defensive line. So he and Joe McDonald will uh, try to Two eighty kind of surge that yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's good size for high school. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, it's one of the reasons why we say, well, geez, Jacob Dolan's made a lot of plays tonight. Well, he's been able to, to roam free because those two guys take up a lot of space and move piles around. Just remember, something, uh, something else the great Chris Spielman taught me at one time is that when you are a linebacker and you're a little undersized, you like to have guys in front of you, as Chris would say, you could show a drive-in movie on their backside. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something Spiels would say. <laughs> All right, so it is now, again, third down, and we'll call it about three from the six. Natal with two in the backfield with him and two receivers to the right. Here's Romanini swinging left inside the five and then got pushed down there. This will depend. He needed to get to the three. To the three. He didn't make it there. They're going to spot it at the four. So fourth so and fourth one. down. 115 and counting on the clock, and Walsh Jesuits shows no signs of bringing in the field goal team. I was just going to say, don't take points off the board, but Nick Alexander, as good as they get as a head football coach, they want to go for it. Fourth and one. Romanini gets it, picks, weaves, and this is going to depend on the spot. Boy, Boy. They, they've gone to the left almost every time, and that went time they tried to run right to, to yes. the right. And he did get the first down. Got enough just inside the three. First and goal. Clock will start moving again. Well, it should start moving. A little bit of size on that right side with uh, Jimmy Branhorst and Nick Khalil. Yep. All right, now the clock is moving in. We're under a minute to go. 17 all tie here late in this second quarter. And Walsh Jesuit trying to retake the lead. They've done a good job working the clock here on this drive. First and goal just inside the three. Romanini will get it. He'll run left, slamming towards the one, but did not get into the end zone. Clock still running. 30 seconds to go. Second and goal from about the one-yard line. You know, this is football. This is mano a mano. This is November football in Northeast Ohio, as good as it gets. 20, 19, 18, and before Nato can get that snap, we're going to have a timeout taken. Bengals will talk about it with 17 seconds to go before halftime. Second and goal coming up. Interesting because they gave the ball to Kish that time. Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. Not Romanini. And Kish, a uh, great defensive player. Really, he could play on both sides of the ball. Thought he was in there mainly, though, to do some blocking. But uh, Casey Kish, the 5'11", 195-pound senior, was going to tote the pigskin that time around. Wow. Dino, good to be back in the saddle with yes, you again, my friend. Yes, yes, yes. Good to have you. If you didn't get a chance, head to WKYC.com. You're obviously you're watching and listening tonight uh, on our, our site and, of course, on our app. Uh, But check out uh, the feature that our Monica Robbins did earlier this week on Mark Munch Bishop. uh, Munch, you have, uh, you know, you've had some medical issues you've dealt with, and it's good to see you. It's good to hear you, and uh, you are, you're here, brother, and it's, it's, uh, it it, it was too, I I mean, obviously, I I knew the story, you know, you and I are close friends, Mm but um, I hope people get a chance to see you and Monica talk about, um, how uh, uh, an examination for one thing led to you needing surgery for something else. Something that was life-threatening. All right, here we go. With 17 seconds to go before halftime, second and goal from inside the two. The give is Kish, I believe, and he's he's in. in. Touchdown, Walsh Jesuit. You know, it's interesting. They ran the same play right before the timeout. They're saying, you know what? Everything that could, they probably asked Kish, was there a hole? Because there was a huge hole. And that's what he ran into (laughs) into that time. Yeah, so Kish with the touchdown. And he puts his team back in the lead, 23-17 with 14 seconds to go here in the first half. What a drive by the Warriors. They did a great job set up by the bell kick return to really just work the clock and not give the Bengals an opportunity to strike back here before halftime. How important have special teams been tonight? Hugely important. 
Kick returns from both teams. Here's Curtis' extra point. It's good. 24-17 Warriors with 14 seconds to go. We've had, let's see, a blocked extra or a blocked field goal. Mm -hmm. We've had field goals fumbles. from each team. We've had fumbles on special teams. And we've had great returns. Conkles had a couple of nice returns for Benedictine. And then Bell with a good return just a few moments ago for the Warriors. I got to tell you, Bell... And Conkle, two of the best returners I've seen in a long, long time. Indeed. And I would think people at higher levels should watch how these young fellows return to football. Well, now, I would say, you know, if I'm Nick Alexander, I wouldn't kick. They're going to have actually Boyd go back deep to receive this. I wouldn't want Boyd. I wouldn't want Conkle. I wouldn't want uh, Greer. To, to have their foot have any shot at, at I wouldn't at want me here. to have a shot <laughs> with 14 seconds left and a half. Just yeah. kick the ball kick on the, the ground. Yeah. But so big, again, the, the Benedictine will start the second half with the football. So, you know, if Walsh, after watching Benedictine strike back and, and go on a 10-0 run to tie the game, you know, they knew if they didn't score on that drive, they would it'd be a long time before they'd see the ball again. Mm -hmm. And instead, they basically chewed out the remaining of the first half clock here. As Curto will kick off again, Boyd back deep to receive. Let's see what Walsh does here. And they'll put it on the ground. Patterson will let it go. Boyd will go back to get it at the 9-yard line. Gets to the 15, cuts to the 20. Oh, Look nice. out to the 30. Here's Boyd to the 40. 50, 40. You got Curto, the man to beat. And they'll bring him down at the 31-yard line with two seconds to go here in the first half. Curta did enough to slow Boyd down where two to all Jesuit uh, defenders in pursuit were able to tackle him from behind. Well, let's oh, see. My. Do you bring in... Do you try to kick a field goal here? This would be yeah. They're gonna they're gonna bring in Christian Cora. Why not? This would be a, probably about a 48 yard attempt yes, here. 48 exactly. My Yarbrough friend. will put it down at the 38. Boy, let's see here if Benedictine can get three points here. A timeout here for the Bengals. That's their last of the first half. But boy, oh boy. We just said a moment ago how big have special teams been in this football game. And there you go, Brandon Boyd. I mean, they tried to not kick it to him, and they got it through the first line, Patterson, but Boyd still was able to return it. And the ball ended up, you know, and they, it was kicked too hard. It was kick, you know, I kick it into the first wave I, of guys. I would, yeah, I would have, honestly, if I, <laughs> it's, there, it's easy, it's there, easy yeah. for me to say it up here <laughs> broadcasting. I would have kicked it out of bounds, to be honest with you, in that situation. Let him, let him start on the 35. Let him start on the yeah. 35. With, with one timeout left and 14 seconds to play. 41-19. Okay, now, let's see. Again, Yarbrough will put it down at the 38-yard line, a 48-yard attempt for Christian Cora. Have to make sure that he gets some trajectory on this one because the Walsh Jesuit Warriors are going to come down. Kick is up. Low line drive. Has the distance. It's good. Right. Good from 48 yards out to end the first half. Oh, how big is that return by Boyd? And I'll tell you what, Brandon Boyd went right over to Christian Cora <laughs> after that kick and said, hey, we did it. We did it. A big three points for the Bengals, 24 to 20. And that's what will stand Christian at Christian Cora's career-long 48-yard kick to send us to halftime. Amazing, too, because you know what? It had enough to get over. It yes. was low, but it made it through the crowd. It made it over the crossbar. That's but you, you were exactly right. The, the trajectory, the height of that kick was going to be so important, and he had just enough elevation to get it above Walsh and give himself an opportunity. We Whoa. go to halftime. Uh, go, we're going to get some pizza, get some <laughs> beverages, let you enjoy the Benedictine band. I don't care if there's only 12 of them. They play their hearts out, and we'll let you enjoy them with us here at Ely this Stadium. This is the clean dozen, they call them, not the dirty dozen. That's right, not the dirty dozen. No, no. Yeah, not Jim Brown and uh, and not the no, Telly Savalas. No, you know what? We were talking earlier about uh, war movies. You saw Patton. Is that uh, Dirty Dozen's got to be up there, too. Absolutely. You know, Veterans Day, there was... Uh, they were all on yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was good stuff. Well, it's been good stuff here at uh, Mercy Health Field at Ely Stadium at the half. It's Walsh Jesuit 24 and Benedictine 20. Munch and I will be back and get you ready for the second half in a few uh, minutes, but let you enjoy halftime in the bands, everybody.
me. Yes. It's me. How are you? Dude, you enjoying this?
Since we're with the Ohio High School Athletic Association Tournament Bracket, so many that is the news around the state. I go to the OHSAA website at www.ohsaa.org. Along with our other social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Connect with the OHSAA so that you can stay connected. They do. Yes. Oh, they do. 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 They Sorry, did you give shout outs? What? Did you give a shout out? Shout outs number, coming, number shout 33 outs on your 11 on 11 here? Right. Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll get Charlie showing here. Because, hold on, should, 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 I give, so funny. should I give the official word on Charlie Shaw? Well, yeah. So where it is, hold on. I have a desire to stay close to the game. I want to contribute to the educational experiences of the student athletes. Become an OHSAA contest official. Welcome positions are always available. To get started, go to www.ohsaa.org slash officiating today. What's that? Oh, you do not. Can we still stand here? at halftime, so that made the halftime show a little bit shorter as we welcome everybody back to Mercy Health Field at uh, Ely Stadium. I'm Dave DiNatale. Mark Munch Bishop is with me as well. We're entertaining. We were, yes, we're, we were. equal opportunity announcers. We are entertaining the Shaw family. Yes. From Walsh Jesuit. Yes. Bradley and Mrs. Shaw. Yes. And uh, their son Charlie, linebacker for the Walsh Jesuit Warriors. So uh, we host them all here, Dino. That's right. I mean, mm -hmm. anybody can stop up and say hi at, at halftime, and uh, and we'll have we'll have the full scoreboard With here. A couple for Tyler of hot Carey. cocos that would even be more welcome. Oh, that would have been yeah. If you want to bring, <laughs> if you want to bring. Uh, and there's also an update. Um, we'll keep an eye on this yeah. as well. Head to WKYC.com. We also have an update on the Amber Alert um, that we had uh, had sent out a little bit earlier today. So um, lots of things to update everybody on. But let's uh, get to the matter at hand here before we get to scores and what else is happening mm -hmm. around Northeast Ohio. Uh, here at the stadium, Munch, 24-20. to 20, Walsh Jesuit leading Benedictine at the break. And... I got to tell you, I, that field goal, and I'm watching Christian Cora on the field right now as he was, I think, the first one out there for the Bengals. I really think that field goal, 
and maybe it might be nothing, but the fact that Benedictine, with 14 seconds to go, uh, was given an opportunity by Brandon Boyd's kick return uh, to get a, a Christian core of 48-yard field goal before the break. Whether or not it's a momentum shifter, we'll see. The Bengals will start the second half with the ball, but uh, that felt like a, a, a three points that you didn't count on that you just sit there and you go, wow, okay, well, you know, you're, getting, you're down four, you gotta, you got to come back, but that that feels like a very important three points to me. How many seconds when Walsh Jesuit kicked off? 14. 14 seconds. If I would have given you, and again, entertainment purposes only, odds that Benedict would come down, not necessarily get a touchdown, but score any points at all, your odds would have been minuscule. Correct. All right? Correct. So for them to do that, that has to be something Jared Good's going to work on, basically saying, you know what, think about this, fellas. If we put our mind to it, we can't be stopped. Right. You can't Because that was the kind of kickoff where you set it up that they're not going to gain any yards. Or the, the worst case scenario is they start on their own 35 and they've got to throw a couple of Hail Marys and go from there. Exactly. Or, or just run the ball into because the line. You, because you only have one timeout yet. Right. They only had one timeout remaining. So it wasn't like, you know, even if, it, it, like I, I had said, I would have just kicked it out of bounds because, okay, with 14 seconds left and one timeout, yes, I know the clock stops to move the chains if you get a first down, but you're not left with a lot of time or real estate to work with so it's just it, to me to even risk kicking it to any you know and usually we've seen Conkle back there to receive but they had Boyd back there to me that was a dangerous gamble that ended up costing uh, the Warriors three points now having said that though Munch you know Walsh has done their some damage tonight with special teams mm -hmm. uh, you know Trey Bell started the game by fumbling uh, his kick return at the 22. Now, uh, they blocked the, the field goal attempt from Cora. It didn't that cost Walsh anything. That, that was huge. That was big, Walsh too. Right then and that there. was big, too. Yes. And then Bell kind of redeemed himself later with a big kick return to set up a touchdown by Jack. Actually, it was uh, Kish who got the touchdown off of that kick, off of a, the kick return by Bell. And... You know, special teams have been huge tonight for both of these squads. Special teams, big runs from scrimmage on plays not designed to pick up 58, Indeed. 60 yards. Right. And the guys have just been breaking tackles. Not so many missed tackles as people running through tackles, force, forcing the defenders to miss. And we've also seen tonight turnovers. You know, as Benedictine was driving down, uh, they had the fumbled exchange between Yarbrough and Baker. And if you're just joining us, Dwayne Jackson, who's, you know, the fine running back for Benedictine, he left the game limping, ended up being carted off uh, from the sideline, and we will not see him the rest of the night. But uh, a, a bad exchange between Yarbrough and Baker ended up resulting in a fumble. And then later in the first half, Matt Nadel was intercepted by Brandon Boyd, which set up a Benedictine touchdown. Do you know, I'm trying to think because earlier in the night with the rain, we had horrific win. Now the flag, I believe that is the south end zone. Yes, it is. Because uh, the, the, the field is north and south. We're south of the old Ely, the original Ely Stadium. Yes. Is that the flag is just lay, just hanging from the flagpole uh, with, with no breeze in any way, shape, or form. And again, what did we say earlier? This game could come down to a field goal. If there's no breeze, we'll see what happens uh, if teams will attempt to you kick further field goals. I will say this. Ordinarily, you're not going to trot core out there for a 48-yarder, but in that situation with the clock End ticking, the half, out, yeah. let it go and see what happens. You're not going to get a, you know, a chance of a return. Anything can happen in this game. But it'll be interesting to know, without the wind, if coaches will be more prone to kick the field goal. And I'm going to say this, too. I... You know, and, and I usually go with a roll of the dice, okay? They'll go down gambling kind of thing. Go with my yeah. boots on. Like I said, if I was General Custer, I would have got my 200 men and said, you know what? There's 5,000 Indians coming to kill us. Let's attack them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They're going to get us anyway, so let's do some damage. But uh, once again, I have, you know, if I kick a field goal down there. Yes. Kish kick, got the touchdown because I'm not taking any points off the board at a game that could be a one-point game. Yeah, I, I, and I, I just think we, we you and I have, have, have seen, you know, we, we watch enough NFL games and we've watched Kevin Stefanski and how daring he's been in the red zone. You just sit there and you go, man, don't uh, don't take points off the board. I'm just looking around at some scores here because we, we're trying to make sure we're covering mm -hmm. uh, this breaking development with this Amber Alert in Jackson Township. Uh, Medina is leading at the half St. Ignatius 17-7, playing that game uh, at uh, Brunswick Auto Mart Stadium. 
So the Battling Bees lead the uh, the Wildcats 17 to seven. Uh, let's see here if we can find a couple more here and give my guy Tyler Carey a chance to kind of get caught up here. Curious with about the Olmstead Falls in Avon. Yeah, uh, I'm going to check on that one too here. That one, uh, last I knew, both Avon. I think we're. I think we may be set for an Avon Highland uh, <laughs> Division Six matchup here. The way that is shaping out right now. So you have some text to my agent provocateurs to get some scores for us here. Well, yeah, just it, it, it almost sounded like Bruce, our friend Bruce Hooley there, a, provo <laughs> a provocateur. They're, they're out there, they're watching the games, and actually, I think it's yeah. uh, cool enough to the hands if you don't have gloves are probably in their pockets. Yeah, last check, uh, Avon was leading uh, Olmstead Falls twenty-eight to seven. So uh, that which surprise, I tell you, I, I mean, Olmstead Falls played. Almost a bit sluggish to start with Barberton, mm -hmm. but for the final three quarters, I thought the Bulldogs played about as perfect of a game. Did they pound Conte the yeah. whole game? Oh, Rocco was brilliant. I mean, he played a, a tremendous game, and it, I really thought that, you know, based on the first matchup this year between Olmstead Falls and Avon, which was, you know, Olmstead Falls had the early lead, it was a tight game, and then um, ended up being. Uh, Avon winning at 41-29. I thought this game would be more of the same. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, you know, when if you're if you're playing, if you're almost at falls and you're down by 21 with the kind of offense they run, it's very difficult. And mm -hmm. my man Tyler Carey is uh, starting to pop out scores because he's a great man. Uh, the other Division Two Region Five game, Hoban leads Nordonia 14 to seven at the half. So, you know, that game is close. That game, you know, anything can happen. Anything yes. can happen. Everybody, you know, I, I, I mean, it's funny. Nordonia's had the great year, but they're the underdogs in this one. They're, they're hanging tough against Hoban, 14-7. Avon, as we said, now at halftime, leading Olmstead Falls, 28-7. Um, Highland continues to lead Toledo Central Catholic, but it's a little bit closer. 17-6 now in the third quarter. That's in Division Two, Region Six. So Avon would likely play the would play the winner of that one next week in that regional final, and then two weeks from now, it sets up a potential state semifinal. I mean, you, you love the matchups. You sit there and you go, "Boy, Avon Benedictine, Avon Walsh Jesuit, Avon and, and, and Highland." Walsh Jesuit, Highland Benedict, and Highland Hoban. I mean, you start to play with these matchups. And then Nordonia still says, hey, wait up, don't forget don't, about don't us. Forget, no, don't the, forget about us. The Knights are still here knocking on the door. Yes. Uh, let's see. In region number seven, Maslin shutting out Sudbury Big Walnut 21 to nothing in the third quarter. Green leads Worcester 14 to 7. Keep in mind, Worcester comes in as a 14 seed in this game. They are the poster. Players uh, for, for, for for expanding yes, playoffs. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You're shaking your head as you say it. I, I I have not been shy about my my feelings about playoff uh, expansion. I'm not a fan. I was not a fan of it. You do not have to be. You know, my only thought was that of course all the players are going to like it. Of course, and, and the coaches are going to like game it. Game or two, and, right. and that's great. And you know what? That that's great. Um, and, and and we've seen we saw Mylon Edison pull off a big upset. We saw obviously Worcester's pulled off mm -hmm. an upset. So I mean it's happened. And, and I and I don't want to sell that short. But we also saw a lot of seventy to seven games and sixty to nothing games. Some bloodletting, yeah, especially yeah. with some of the set, a couple of yeah, teams that got in. Yeah, yeah, that that quite frankly. Nobody deserves that. Uh, other scores much. How about this? Uh, in as Tyler's kind of really, he's gotten all the scores out uh, because he's awesome. Uh, let's see. Let's go Division One, Region One. Saint Edward shutting out McKinley at the half, twenty-one to nothing. Not a real mm -hmm. surprise. No. Uh, Medina, as we said, seventeen-seven over Saint Ignatius. I hear Aller is just looking spectacular. From text I'm getting from some of the Ignatius faithful saying that he's as good a quarterback as they've seen. You know, and they worked. They held Mitch Trubisky. They being the defense of St. Ignatius in 2011. I, they I've have 38 yards in the first half. I've gone on record saying Aller's the best quarterback I've seen since Trubisky. Okay. So, so yeah, I, I I can agree. Now, Division Three, Region Nine, Chardon leads K 
Canfield, 14 to seven. A little closer than yeah, maybe we had thought. A lot closer. Dover, I, I'm surprised about this low score. Okay. Dover 13, Kenston seven. The Kenston Grubiches in Come the on. third quarter. Go Bombers. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not about. You know, all, all due respect to Dover, yeah, but... I'll tell you, but, the five wides that they run yeah. to hurry up, the, the quarterback would just hand signals calling the plays. Yeah. It's amazing what they do there. But Mr. Bishop and I are both big fans of one Jeff Grubich. Yes, so we we'll are. see we'll see how that one plays out. Could be a, a bomber, a hilltopper rematch next <laughs> oh, week. Oh, exactly. After, <laughs> after 49 to nothing uh, when they played earlier this year. And, and, again, keep in mind, Kenston was missing a lot of their keep offensive players. Uh, in Region 10 in Division 3, Padua trailing Holy Name in Brooklyn, 21-7 in the third quarter. West Holmes, they are undefeated. They are leading Rocky River, 34-14 at the half. Uh, Perry in Division 4, <laughs> leading West Branch, 13-6. That's in the third quarter. Glenville and Ursuline. Uh, I think they're playing that game in Euclid, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they are. They're all tied at the half, 22 apiece. You know, it, and uh, Coach Reardon, of course, who brought Kenton McKinley back, they went back home to Ursula, really has that program rocking and Yes, rolling. indeed. And Port Clinton is leading Perkins in the third quarter, 13-7. to Cavaliers, second quarter on top of the Detroit Pistons, 52-39. The scoreboard from Tyler Carey here <laughs> at the halftime. Brought to you by Tyler Carey. By Tyler TC Carey. presents. Yes. And we remind you, the WKYC Game of the Week is presented by Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is your home of the original chicken sandwich. Stop by your neighborhood Chick-fil-A in Cleveland, Akron, and Canton. You tell them Mark Munch Bishop sent you, and you tell them you want your chicken sandwich. Sandwich with the pickle. pickle? Dennis, uh. Dennis Manilov will agree with you as well. <laughs> hey, but you, but you're uh, you're you're not anti pickle. You just want to have it on the side. Something to notch on on the side, or not even for that. Not even for that. You're not a pickle guy. Not a pickle. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Let's just get it out right now. Since we're, we're working together, we're back in the saddle yes, again. Is yes. there else is slang? If it's pickled, it's me. If it's pickled beets, if it's pickled cucumbers, if it's pickled eggs. I'm all well, over it. Well, listen, I, I, I can't imagine that the, you know, growing up where you did, in the, the Bishop household, the Slovenians, that they would Slovenians be... Slovenians and Slo Slovaks, 50 Slovaks. You wouldn't have it any other... They wouldn't have it any other way. But I flash back when Mom would send me over to Lincoln's Tavern, where Dennis Kucinich actually used to hang out, too, uh, on Friday when Dad would get his paycheck there and maybe put down an old crow in a, in, in a, in a, in a uh, colony's black label. Yes. And then I remember seeing that big jar of the pickled eggs sitting behind the bar. <laughs> As we start the second half on that note, Walsh Jesuit. 24, Benedict and nothing, or 20, <laughs> Kurt at the kickoff, 24-20. The kick will be angled to the right, fielded at the 10-yard line off the bounce. Here comes Conkle to the 25, at least I think that's Conkle. Now it's Boyd out to the 29-yard line after having a good return earlier. Boyd will take it to the 29. They wish they would have had that kickoff uh, right before halftime, and Benedict and will start near their own 30. I like what the Warriors did. They basically pushed Boyd to the boundary. Yes. Because it's another defender there, and then he got him out of bounds. Didn't give him a lot of running room. And you know what? I don't... Oh, no, there's Conkle. I didn't see him in there, in there initially. He's in there. He and Boyd are flanked out wide left, and Terrell Greer will go out wide right. Baker in the backfield. They'll position him to the left of Yarbrough from the 30. Fake handoff. Yarbrough to throw. Pops it over the middle for Jennings and oh. overshot him at the 40-yard line. Kareem was open, and Yarbrough just missed him, second and ten. It was a proverbial, and we've seen the Browns get killed by that by years to the likes of uh, uh, Todd Heap and other yes, tight ends. Yes, The tight end was wide Heath open. Heath Miller. Between, you know, running up to hash marks. Yep. Yeah, yep. wide open that time, and Yarbrough overthrew him. Yeah, Todd Heap, Heath Miller. Oh, all, all, yeah. You know, even, uh, even more recently, Jesse James, are going yes. back further, the Jewish bomber, Randy Grossman. Oh, boy, you really went back. Benny Cunningham? Oh, bro, keep it rocking. <laughs> now, unlike not Sam the Bam Cunningham. No, no. <laughs> and the wife is going to say you forgot to bring home a pint of milk, and I heard you and Dino talking about guys from 40 years. Yarbrough yeah, mill screen to reach the 35-yard line. He's taken out of bounds at about the 37. So first catch of the game for Reed. Tyron Rogers, we keep calling his number. He came out from his nose position to make the tackle. It'll be third down and two coming up here for the Bengals. How does that young fella, and I want to salute him, uh, Rogers, how does he go from the nose tackle position all the way to the other sideline? To chase down a running yeah, back. Yeah, heart and hustle yep. and desire, there's no doubt. Reed will stand behind Yarbrough on the pistol, now move to his right. 
Four wide here for the Bengals on third and short as they bring in. They, actually, they, they flank out Jennings really kind of in a slot right. And now Reed will move to the left of Yarbrough. Third and two, quick drop, Yarbrough over the middle, looking for Conkle, and he missed him incomplete, overshot him. Probably good that he did. He was well covered. Josh Grogan was back on coverage. Well, our comments are getting texts in today. A lot of people listening to us right now on WKYC.com. Absolutely. <laughs> <It'll grow. laughs> Say much of classic line. Uh, come on. My dad was a tool and die maker. Took the bus to work, got off, and made sure he hit Lincoln's on the way home. After missing on that uh, third short play, Cora will come in to punt, and they're a man short. Bettingfield is the last man to check in. You know, you can't have that. They're a man heavy and then a man short. You've got to be fine-tuned on this. I'm fourth and two. Cora gets the snap and gets the kick away. and That's a punt. Fair catch called for and made at the 29. They may actually mark it up to the 30-yard line as it was Gabe Gardner making that catch in on a fair catch here for the Warriors. They'll start first and 10 at their own 30. Do you know how many times have we seen in a high school game punts come out like a line drive? Yeah, or, a lot. Or they, go, they go 20 yards up in the air and only 10 With yards With no out. hang time, this yes. Is a, this is a bona fide punter in there in Cora for the Bengals. So. What do you do now? If you're Walsh, do you do some quick hit runs again to see if you can break one? Because well, they've been doing it in the first half. Or do you go back up top to Bell, which got him a touchdown. But you got to go quick. you yes. got to throw it quick. Nadal ready to go, and he'll send a man in motion left. They'll fake the bubble screen and give to Bremner, and he'll oh. take it forward and then got pushed back. I mean, like I said, he was back at about the 27 when he got the handoff. He put forward back near the line of scrimmage. And it was a very painful no gain for Justin. The Bengals threw eight in the box that time. Everybody jumped in there, uh, even one of the DBs that time around. Empty backfield, and I think, boy, I tell you, again, you have another offside penalty committed by Benedictine. It's coming off the right side, Joe McDonald and uh, Kareem Jennings. And I think that time, it may have been Bettingfield who got a little bit antsy Because he's there. been poking his head in yeah. there, too, from that linebacker spot. Yeah, yeah. and Jerry Good, I think, just said something to him when he came off the field. All right, so five yards. It'll be second and five now for the Warriors, moving up to the 35-yard line. Five wide receivers now for Matt Nadel, and he'll move Bremner in the backfield with him. So back now to four wide. I'm trying to find Bell out there. Bremner will get the carry. Stumbles as he crossed the 35, then dove forward out to the 41 yard well, he line. He got a first down with that last dive. Yeah, it's a nice piece of running by Bremner after stumbling there, and it's a gain of six and a first down. Running behind Fallon and Passarello again, Joey D'Angelo is the center. Again, these are not big fellas, but the bottom line is they're quick on it. If you hit the hole quickly, they get that first move. Exactly. Two receivers to each side, 10-15 to go in the third quarter, 24-20, Walsh in the lead. They've got the ball now as Nadal throws at the 45-yard line, a little bit too high, trying to get it to Josh Campagna, and it's incomplete. Campagna was covered. I think that was Hatcher over there on the near side. You know, interesting because you got uh, Ochi, Ochi with uh, 38 receptions on the year, Campagna with 36, Bell with 34. That's a pretty nice compliment to your game. And yeah, and they have Gardner as yeah. well too. Yeah, Gardner's got nine on the air. Five wide on second and ten now for the Warriors from the forty. Here's Nadal steps up, fires deep over the Campania wide open at the forty, and he'll be taken down inside the thirty to the twenty-nine yard line as Brandon Boyd made a touchdown saving tackle, and it'll be first and ten for Walsh at the Benedictine 29 yard line off the hookup from Matt Nadel to Josh Campania. Something happened and it wasn't good that time for the Bengals because Boyd was back there. He had Campania and Bell, two guys to cover, and you can't do that yeah. with your one man. Big there, time there was breakdown. a breakdown in coverage. Yes. Right on that seam. Mm -hmm. So ball will be spotted at the 29. Walsh leads by four, trying to tack on more here as Bremner will stand to Nadal's right with four wide receivers. Off the shotgun, Nadal gives Bremner swinging left side. Flag goes down. Bremner will go inside the 25 and down near the 20, but I think somebody was holding Darrell Bettingfield, and that's going to cause a penalty every time. 
And it is really a penalty against the Warriors for a holding. Because there was about 10, 10 yards of open turf yeah. when he turned the corner. Why? Because of the hold. See, that's what the referees have to ask themselves quickly, too. There's holding on every play, Dino. I will tell you yeah, that. Yeah, okay? we know that. That is this one affecting that play. And in a case like that, it affected it big time. So move it back to the 39-yard line. And call it now a first and 20. But look at that. Once again, Walsh Jesuit hustling yeah. to get to the line of scrimmage. They're on the play. Yeah, quickly on the ball now at the Bengal 39. And they'll send Ochi in motion. Give the ball. I believe that was Romanini. And inside the 39 to the 38, only about a gain of one on that pickup. And With it'll third be and 18, third and 19. Second down. Actually. Oh, second and 19. Okay. Actually, they're calling it second and 20. Yeah. Boy, again, uh, kudos. That was Bremner, by the way, not Romanini. Yeah. Just to kudos sure to the, the the Walsh faithful again, driving an hour or so, and uh, their stands are filled. And we're right above the, uh, the, the Benedictine stands, and they're pretty crowded, too. Nato airs one out towards the end zone, and has caught that near the five-yard line, and down at about the one. It'll be first and goal for Walsh Jesuit as Nato threaded the needle down the left sideline. And I think for, let's see, I think that time it was Ochi on the catch, and it will be first and goal. It was Ochi, and once again, unbelievable blanket coverage. But again, you get your outside, you get your back shoulder past the, def the defender, and the pass oh. is there, you're going to catch it. It was a beautiful Brilliant. throw by Matt Nadel, one of his best of the night. First and goal at the one. Yeah. Bremner stands next to Nadel in that pistol look with four wide receivers. They'll give on a jet sweep heading towards the goal line, but not getting in. I think it was Ochi who deserved a touchdown well, after that close. run. He didn't quite get in, though. It'll be second and goal. Unbelievable toss to set him up on there. And Dino, once again, what was it? Another big play. I know he's a, yeah. the coach of the Dreader Steelers, but Mike Tomlin talks about splash, pl splash plays. That's what we're seeing. And a flag goes down on second and goals. They give the ball to Bremner. I don't he's think any jump, jump this time. Do you I don't either. <laughs> Yeah, this time I think it's going to be against the Warriors. No, it is against Benedictine. Oh, my, they jumped again. Now, it's essentially going to be a little closer towards the goal line than it already was. Trey Bell be running off, off, which is interesting because he's such a weapon. But they hand him out as a lonesome man in any way, well, almost like a decoy. And what it does now, the stoppage, it gives them a chance to bring in uh, both Kish and Romanini. The robust package, as yes. we call it. Second and goal out of that penalty ball, about as close to the goal line as you can be. Nadal gets the snap, gives Romanini, slams to the right, and he's in. Touchdown, Walsh Jesuit. Jack Romanini takes it in from a yard out for his second score of the night. And Walsh Jesuit now leads it 30-20 to 20 with 7.35 to go here in the third quarter. You know, when Walsh needs tough yardage, they're going to which I, they consider to be their bigger guys, uh, Bradhorst and Khalil, the right guard and the right tackle. And that's where they ran that time. You know, Munch, that play was the, everything was set up by that natal pass to Ochi. That was on a second and 19 from the 39. It ended up being a 38-yard completion to set up that touchdown. The pass was brilliant. The catch was brilliant. And there's no the, 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 the coverage was blanket coverage. But it just shows you that uh, you squeeze it in that window, you could beat anybody covered. Darrell Bettingfield, after that touchdown, was slow to get up, and he is limping off the field. And Darrell's been battling injuries all year long. And it, it, it's at looking down, and, and you ponder it. I mean, James Phillips is out for this game. He's been hurt. They've lost. They obviously Whoa. lost uh, earlier Fields, tonight. Dwayne Jackson getting I mean, more labored with his walking as yeah. he goes to the bench. I mean, Bettingfield is such an important part of the defense, and I mean, he is really trying to gut out the pain there, sitting on the bench. Here's the extra point for Cooper Curta to try to make it an 11 point lead for the Warriors. Ball is down. Kick is up on its way, and it is good. 7.35 to play in the third quarter. Walsh Jesuit 31, Benedictine 20. And we keep talking about how Benedictine is going to answer the Warriors on offense. Well, they have their weapons too. Right now, if you're Benedictine, you've got to come up with a way to A, 
get to Nadal because when he give when he gives he gets in a little bit you need a little bit more time for those deep passes and he's had it which to me is shocking that the Bengals can't get a rush on him. Yeah, it's been you know it's been Kareem Jennings has been very quiet so far in this game as a as a pass rusher. So yeah, I that I would agree with you and you know it's an 11 point lead so you would think. You know, we're going to see a lot of Romanini and Bremner running it mm -hmm. from here on in. So, oh, you know Bene Benedictine's defense is going to need to figure out how to contain Walsh Joseph. But first things first, Benedictine's offense needs to put some points back on the board here as it's uh, back to a two-possession deficit. Let's see what Kurt of those are going to be. Because you've got Boyd, you've got Hunkel, both dangerous guys with that football, but only one of them's back now. And Patterson's back is there as well. And they'll kick it on a couple of bounces. Boyd will pick it up at the 5. And out to the 10, to the 15. And he'll be taken down at the 19-yard line. And Successful for yeah, Walsh, yeah. The last, two, the last two kickoffs for Curta have been perfect. And that's what they I mean. They just try to skip it on a lot of bounces. So it, it takes, whether it's Boyd or Conkle, extra time to wait to go get that ball. And it allows the team to come down on special teams, the Walsh Jesuit to come down on special teams to make the play. And then Boyd fumbled it when he picked it up at first, which gives the defense, uh, the, the guys that are covering the punt, or the kickoff, I'm sorry, extra, just, you know, they're getting down there quicker than once the ball's being fumbled around. So the Bengals will start with the ball near their own 19, trailing 31 to 20 with 7:27 to go in the third quarter here in Illyria. Very yep. impressive showing so far by Walsh Jesuit. No doubt about it. On the ground, here's Baker. Made a, made a couple of nice moves and then lost the football. And Walsh Jesuit's got it at the 21-yard line. It just uh, popped out of Baker's hands. Kish is on it. Boy, you want a big Boy, play. Is he, is He's he, going to be the man. Kish has been terrific on defense tonight. He comes away with the recovery. And Walsh Jesuit now with an 11-point lead. And they will get the ball in the red zone near the Bengal 20. Actually right at the 20-yard line. And I was mentioning or earlier right now with the, the lead that uh, Walsh Jesuit has, the 11-point uh, lead, yeah, just run the football with Romanini, run it with Bremner, run it with uh, with Kish. Right now, I throw the ball in the end. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm looking at Bell flanked out wide right. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Yeah, and wondering if they may look in that direction. From the 20, here comes Walsh. On the ground, Bremner to the left. He'll swing it out to the 16 down near the 15-yard line. Gets about five on first down. Second and five coming up. Bremner doing a good job and nothing fancy that time. Just uh, the old student body left and he took advantage of it. Once you get the feeling here, the Bengals, I mean, they, they, they got to come out of this no worse than a field goal. I agree. Second and five from the 15. Nadal has Romanini to his left. He's got Bremner to his right with three wide receivers, including Bell here on our near side, Campania. On the slot to give. Here comes Bremner swinging to the right this time. Inside the 10. Knocks down a would-be tackler. Actually, that's Romanini. And Jack will be taken down at the six-yard line where it will be first and goal for the Warriors. Romanini running as hard as anyone I've seen in a long time. And very good job, too, because you had a lot of uh, movement on the line. A good movement. But a Walsh Jesuit line actually running a counter that time as the left tackle came. Well, Fallon came all the way around to lead the blocking to the right. Same look. Three wide receivers with Romanini and Bremner in the backfield. First and goal from about the seven. High snap. It's pulled down and Romanini will get the handoff and get maybe back to the line of scrimmage and that's about it. It'll be second and goal from he there. Stone, McDonald, Jennings, Iliano all there to greet him and meet him at the, uh, at the line of scrimmage. 6.05. Now this one's going by quickly because what's Walsh Jesuit doing? The clock is our friend. Being, you know, they're they're being methodical mm -hmm. while still being aggressive, if that makes sense. It does. Second and goal. Nadal rolls left. Looks like he's got a man wide open, and he overshot Romanini. Incomplete. Oh, Jack had snuck out of the backfield, and there's a, an offensive lineman for Walsh Jesuit slow to get up. It's Nick Khalil, the right tackle. That he wants to stay in there. He's limping back to the huddle where it will be third down and goal. Do you know this oh, is Roman crazy? Oh, was open there. Because he, he is open. Now I'm seeing players for uh, Benedictine 
limping around in the backfield too. Just saw one of their DBs limp back to the huddle. Uh, guys are going down left and, and right and today. And Benningfield is not in there on defense right now. He's being tended to on the bench. Kareem Jennings limp back to the to the line of scrimmage. Third and goal. Fake to Bremner. Nadal to throw. High on his attempt and it's incomplete over on the left side at about the two yard line. Even if he makes that catch, he's not going to get a touchdown. That was either Bell or it was Ochi. I think that was Christian over there, Ochi, the intended receiver. Fourth and goal, and here comes Cooper Curta for a field goal attempt. Well, if you're benedicting what the Dino and I just note before, if anything good comes out of this for the blue and white of the Bengals, it is to hold the uh, Walsh Jesuit to a field goal. But you're two touchdowns down, and they've got yeah. to generate some offense. Nate Ost will put it down right about at the 15-yard line, so it's a 25-yard attempt. Snap good, hold good, kick up. Little low line driver, and it's no he good. Wide left. Sailed left. No good. Well, Benedictine wow. dodging a big time bullet that time around. Huge. So, what Benedictine needs to do now, though? This is only part of the story, Dino. We've just read the. Pro now they need to go down and score in the biggest and baddest way. And I think Javion Baker is going to need the ball. You know, it's, we talked about it earlier with Bell. You know, they can't win this game if they can't run the football, and they've got to make sure that, that Baker's confidence is back up because they need him. They don't have Jackson. And not just the confidence up, but Yarbrough on that last drive missed two wide-open receivers. Yes. Uh, Jennings a tight end up the middle and a receiver to the left side, so he's definitely got to get that accuracy going. And just thinking about that, too, Natal missed Romanini, who had snuck out of the mm -hmm. backfield for what would have been a touchdown. And Jennings tried to cover him. A defensive end on the back isn't going to work. At the 20, first and 10, Benedictines. So back to where we started from. And Yarbrough, quick drop. Lofts one left for Boyd. Makes the catch at the 45. He's to the 50 and gets pushed out of bounds at about the 45-yard line of the Warriors. Brian Blackwell, the cornerback, makes that tackle. But a brilliant pitch and catch from Yarbrough to Boyd for a first down. That was needed in the biggest of ways because Yarbrough had been missing, guys. And that was a tough throw. Yeah, it was. He squeezed it through a window. 36 yards on the pickup. Looking for Boyd again. Got it again inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. Couple of hookups between Yarbrough and Boyd. And quickly now to the Warrior 25-yard line. Another first down. Boyd went high to pull that down. To, looked like it was about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, the way he went up to get to that football. Gabriel Beltovsky checks in as one of the running backs. First time we've seen him. He is in there with Luke Reed. So no Baker, at least not on this play. Three wide receivers for the Benedictine Bengals. Legendary name, of course, his brother and offensive lineman for the last few years for Benedictine. Yes. And he's going to be in there more as a blocker. Fake handoff to him. Yarbrough looks over the middle towards the end zone, and it's incomplete. And I got to tell you, it was almost intercepted. Yeah. Threw that one in the double coverage, trying to get it over to, I think that was Greer over on the right side, incomplete. It was, and the safety played it. Perfectly. That was uh, Josh Grogan, the free yep. safety. Just waited for it and saw the man make his cut. Took two steps that way and almost had a pick. Beltowski checks out. Jennings in. It will be second and 10 for Benedictine at the Walsh Jesuit 25. 4.53 to go in the third quarter. Fake handoff, Yarbrough over the middle looking for Jennings. And that was it intercepted off. at the six-yard line. Threw that one into coverage. And a pick for Walsh Jesuit. Did not see a license plate number on that interceptor, but a big stop by Walsh Jesuit. Well, the bottom line is the Benedictine quarterback threw that into triple coverage. He locked on his receiver, and you know, there are other guys out there going on past patterns, which means they were single covered. He threw it to the worst place he could have. And, of course, that makes sense because it was to the other team. But, no, he made a great interception. He went high to get to that. I think that was Herbally on the pick. And I it apologize makes sense if that was wrong, but I thought from his safety spot, mm -hmm. came over to make it. Either what Herbally a big, or Brogan, big stop. I would say, yeah. yeah. What a big stop by the Warriors. Now, if you're the Bengals, you got to force a three and out down here. Benedictine has to force a three and out. Boy, after you get the two big hookups to Boyd, you come out with that interception. And now Nadal and company ready to go first and 10 at their own seven. 11 point lead for Walsh Jesuit and they've got the ball back. And they'll go on the ground on first down and 
very little running room. If anything, they probably lost a yard back towards the five. Yeah, they might have lost two yards that yeah. time, and that was exactly what Benedictine needed to do. They've got to force a three and out down here. Yeah, that was Bremner on the carry and is indeed going to be a loss of two, second down and 12. Well, they're going to actually they're gonna mark that. Yeah, they're going to mark it back at the four, much. Yeah, it's a loss of three. You know what Walsh Jesuit's doing? They're taking their time. Nadal rolling left, throws left, man open at the 10 yard line out to the 15, first down to the 20, and out of bounds near the 21 yard line on the far side. That was a backbreaker. I understand there's still a lot of field to go, so it's 75 yards, but they got out of the hole. And whoever made that catch over on the far side got a little shaken up. That may have been Bell again. Yeah, I think it was. Well, Bell's taking some hits today. You know, is he the biggest guy? <laughs> Absolutely not. But uh, he's got some, you know, he's, he's got the speed. You know, Ted Ginn Jr. told me years ago that he's, I said, Ted, you're, you're skinny. You're not that big. He goes, Bunch, I move so fast I don't get hit hard. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> yeah, Bell got hit hard that time. So the ball will be spotted near the 22, and they're able to tend to the injury and uh, get everybody off the field and, uh, set things up now, first and 10 Warriors at the 22. But you're right, that's a huge pickup. And, you know, credit to you know Nick Alexander and his offensive coaching staff. Being aggressive after that loss of three, kind of rolling Natal out and giving him an opportunity for completion. Back on the ground, here's Bremner to the 25, and he'll be taken down at the 26. Again, going on that left side behind Fallon and Passarello. And it's a gain of about four for Justin Bremner. And what Walsh Jesuits do is they're trying to send another blocker, uh, whether it's a, a receiver in motion or another back, into that same hole to try to clear it away. Campania out wide to the right. And that's Marshall over there with him over here on the right. Two backs in the backfield. Mm -hmm. Second down and six. Fake to Bremner. Nadal wants to set up a screen. Throws it into no man's land and almost intercepted. Closest man to the football was left tackle Dom Fallon. Nadal got hammered. Second time we saw one, him throw one up for grabs. Bottom line is he, he, he's, he can't do that uh, to, without risking peril for the Walsh yeah. Jezreel Warriors. He just threw that one to, to no one in To no one there, yeah. yeah. And that's when it's dangerous. Third and six. How big is this play? Bell back in the game, by the way. That's mm -hmm. good to see. You don't want to see anybody go down in these games. Ochi and Campania wide left. Bell wide right with Marshall. Shotgun for Matt Nadal on a third down and six. And Campania now goes in motion. So you've got trips to the right, and we've got a whistle. And timeout, Walsh Jesuit, as the play clock was running down. So the Warriors will have two timeouts remaining here in the second half. 11-point lead, 31-20. For Walsh Jesuit, I know they wanted that last field goal to give them a two-touchdown lead. But still, right now, touchdown and field goal, unless you go for two. Yeah, it's a, it's a two-possession so, yeah. Yeah, two lead. And that's why that interception by Benedictine was so critical. Because you know, at the very least, the way they were driving, you felt like they could at least get a field goal back from Cora. Mm -hmm. And get, you know, get well, I to felt one touchdown at yeah. the least the way well, they Yeah, two quick the passes to Boyd, yeah. yeah. But uh, instead, they come away with nothing. And as you said, you know, they lost some precious field position and time because of the first down completion to Bell. And now you're looking at a third down and about six here. As they need to get to the 32 to keep this drive going. We've got the window open here. A pleasant Friday evening in uh, Lorain County. It is indeed. The, the, a light rain falling. Here. Unlike Bob Dylan's hard rating. That's ball. right. That's mm -hmm. right. Here we go. Third down for Walsh Jesuit. Man in motion left to right. It's Campania that time. As Nadal looks left. Throws left. Ochi with the catch. First down to the 35-yard line. Just a quick slant, and those are the, the, the best pay passes. I didn't understand Nadal's hit guys deep before, but those are the most effective passes today for Walsh Jesuit, especially to get them out of holes or to pick up first downs yeah. on third and six. Got about ten on that one. It's a first down. And the clock keeps ticking. Yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. much. That's it, it's, it's precious time and precious field position the Bengals kind of lost out of the sequence. 
You know, watching Nadal here. The play clock's down to 10. Again, they're not milking it. Well, he's it, using it all. But he's, you know, they're they're staying aggressive, but they're being deliberate. Bremner with a carry, running left. He's got room to the 35, goes to the 40, and they'll finally take him down at about the 42-yard line. Bremner has such good instincts running the football. It's a different defense, too, when Bettyfield's not in there. No question. He's limping on the sideline with his towel over his head. Definitely not a very happy camper right now. And he, he's definitely hurt. Yeah, he's out. He's not I in there right now. Injured, yeah. Jackson is out for the game. I mean, you know, Benedictine has really had the last couple of weeks. They've been ravaged by injuries. Second and two, throw 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 a pass for 15, 20 yards. Let's see. He's going to get back. Come back and get it on third. Marshall goes in motion. Shotgun. Nadal sets up a middle screen incomplete as he had three blue jerseys in his face. You're, and when I say you're, you're setting up a middle screen, you're looking for your running back to be basically where the, the blitz comes. Mm -hmm. And in that case, there just wasn't nobody home. It was all congested with traffic there, third down and two. And you want guys in your face because you're sucking the defenders exactly. away from the guy you're throwing the ball to. Quickly now, Nadal ready. Gives Bremner to the left, and he'll get the first down. Yes, he did. Boy, As, he got about four, needed two. Yeah, takes it out to the 47-yard line. Fresh set of downs with two minutes to go here in the third quarter. And I'll tell you something that uh, is just, you know, all these young men have worked so hard, but uh, Darrell Bettingfield on the sideline with his head down, knowing that he can't help his team. Yeah. University of, the, University of Toledo commit, and he has had such a brilliant career. Best defender on the Bengals? Best defender for me when he's healthy in Northeast Ohio wow. that I've seen over the last two that plus years. That says a lot. But not able to be in there right now. And here comes Bremner again off of kind of the read option, and Benedictine does a good job forcing him out of bounds at the 45-yard line. He lost A two. loss of two on the play. And that's one thing Benedictine must do. They've got to string those out because where have most of the runs come? I mean, a touchdown run when you need one yard, you just go right behind the center of the guard. But most of the big runs have come generated around the, around the side As in a sweep type. That was Jennings who forced him out of bounds there. Lost to two, second and 12, a minute 24 to go in the third quarter. Warriors 31, Bengals 20 here at Mercy Health Field at Ely Stadium in Elyria. Second and long, fake to Bremner, Nadal the throw, fires one deep left side, jersey grab, we're going to have an interference coming up, yes, a pass incomplete, as I think that may have been Bell who was off to the races down that left sideline, and the defender for Benedictine grabbed a hold of him, because if he doesn't, Trey Bell is uh, running towards Grafton. Well, I wondered, and not to uh, graph to the Correctional Institute either. Uh, no, but, no. Uh, <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> but the bottom line is, yeah, the DB just reached out and grabbed him because he saw that he was going to burst and blow by him. Now keep in mind, that was a second and 12, and that penalty will move it up now. Not inter I think it's just defensive holding, Munch. Well, you know what? Defensive holding or even pass interference in college and uh, uh, college or high school, one of the best penalties there is. So it's only going to be it's going to be a second and short now, second and two, as we've got another flag down as Gabe Gardner was going in motion and offsides. Benedictin jumped again. Benedictin, five yard penalty, first down, and that's going to be unofficially at least the fourth time they've jumped. Oh, and, I, and I, I remember saying it three weeks ago. It's why coaches get gray hair. <laughs> I mean. Well, I haven't seen any of Jared Good yet, but we'll check him no, out. No, we'll have to ask him. Bremner will get the carry inside the 40. Oh, he got hammered. Hit at the 39-yard line. Check, check that it's Jack Romanini on the carry. Wouldn't have mattered. Either, either back was going to get slammed down as Devontae James made the hit for the Bengals. Huge hit that time by James. Gain of one for Romanini, second and nine. Under a minute now to play here in the third quarter. 31-20, Walsh Jesuit on top. It's both uh, Romanini and Bremner in the backfield. On 47 second and seconds left in the third. And here's Matt Nadel. Lofts one for Campania out to the right, and it's incomplete. Overshot him by about five yards. Mike Hatcher was back there on the coverage. Nice coverage that time by Hatcher, the 5'970-pound uh, junior. 
I'll tell you this, Nato's not afraid to air it out. No, and no, no, no. They're keeping them fairly clean back there because with Betting Field out of the game, he was giving a fifth rush, becoming a fifth rusher to get to the quarterback, and uh, they totally have taken that aspect out. Well, I think, I, look, look, Munch, look who's back in there. Mr. Right in his blitzing spot, Betting Field. Betting Field came back in. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. After that last play, when, when the pocket was clean, he was able to get this off. Third and nine with 38 seconds to go for Walsh at the Benedictine 39. Nadal wants one deep left. He's got a man open. Overshot him at the 10-yard line. Oh, it was there. It was there. They were looking for Ochi. Separation galore. I mean, Christian Ochi got the job done. Two men on him. Safety rolled over to him, and he still had a beat. Yep. Well, Nadal hasn't missed too many passes no, today. No, missed that one, though. He'll mm -hmm. want that one back. Fourth and nine, Nick Alexander is going to bring Nick Herberly in to punt it away. Very good move because they should they should get Benedictine back between the inside their ten yard line. Boy, the Bengals have dodged a couple of uh, would be bullets here to, to stay in this game. Thirty one to twenty with thirty one seconds to go. Herberly's kick. It's a low kick. It'll bounce inside the twenty. Take a Walsh bounce to about the 13-yard line. Wasn't a good-looking punch, but he did, a little yeah, too much, he yeah. did what he needed, though, was he pinned Benedictine inside the 15-yard line. 19 seconds now to play in the third quarter. Well, Dino, what do you do? Do you try to establish the running game again with Jackson out? I mean, we've seen. We, we saw there's no doubt that um, you know Baker can get a big run, but you got to get some. Uh, you got to open up some holes for him. Um, Reed has been back there too. You, you can't get just careless start throwing the football all over the field. You got to establish some kind of run. You still have o over a quarter. Yeah, a quarter and nine seconds. We got a long, got a long yeah. way to go. You got all your timeouts. I mean, it's a two possession game. And right, we'll see here is Yarbrough. We'll have Reed standing behind him. And Reed will get the carry on first down. Oh, and my. Very little room as he got shoved back by Walsh Jesuit at a, after about a gain of one, even if that second and long will be coming up as we start the fourth quarter. Tyron Rogers, John Paul Fider were both there and uh, had some linebacker help too from uh, Grogan and Kish. Yeah, you called J.P. Fida's name a mm -hmm. bunch of times tonight. End of three here in Elyria will shift sides. And Walsh Jesuit, the five seed here in Region 5, leading the top-seeded Bengals of Benedictine, 31 to 20. Three quarters in the books. Winner will move on and play either Nordonia or Hoban next Friday night for the regional championship. You know, it's interesting, too, because you're seeing some teams with a resurgence of, of the programs. Yes. Highland is one of them. No uh, doubt. You know, coming back after a while. But, again, since Nick Alexander has taken over the helm of uh, the Walsh Jesuit Warriors, they've been moving forward. Yeah, nothing but. I mean, at one point they, they had a season where they were 0-10. And, and, you know, he's come in and they, they just got better and better. And a 10-2 and season this year. And leading now after three quarters here in Elyria in this regional semifinal. Scoreboard time from Tyler Carey here. Oh, a quick little fields. note for you. What do you got? My buddy David Njoku hanging out in the student section with St. Ignatius today. Really? Must I care about people from Medina buying he, Browns tickets? He is your <laughs> he is your buddy, by the way. You and the Chief. <laughs> I don't want him in a foxhole with me, okay? But, <laughs> but just catch the football and get me some rack in the act. All right. We'll check. <laughs> <laughs> Second and ten, Reed got no gain on that last play. <laughs> and block. He'll shift to the right of Yarbrough. They can off CJ to throw over the middle. He can't make the connection with Terrell Greer. It's incomplete. Oh, Greer was off to the races. Greer was, was off to touchdown. the races. And that was actually a pretty good throw by Yarbrough. It'll be third and ten. Maslin advances to the regional final. They beat Big Walnut in region 7, 38 to nothing. St. Edward on to the regional final. They shut out McKinley tonight at Byers Field, 42 to nothing. Fourth quarter, Hoban leading Nordonia, 21 to 7. Avon, fourth quarter over Olmstead Falls, 41 to 21. Toledo Central Catholic and Highland are tied now at oh. 20 in the fourth quarter. We'll get you more scores in a second, including Menor and St. Ignatius. It's the second time I've done that. Medina and St. Ignatius. Sorry, Battling Bees fans. 
I'm so used to men, saying Menor this time of year. Benedictine <laughs> will take a timeout before a third and ten at their own 13. A more kudos for Dino Di Natale and your truly Mark Bunch Bishop from Johnny Smetana, the former uh, Miami quarterback with uh, back in up Bernie Yes, Goals. yes. He owns uh, Johnnyville Woods in the oh, arcade. Of course, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, and he's worked with quarterbacks too, saying, hey, loving the game. He goes, uh, Matt Natal, Dad Carmen, shout out to you guys too for calling a good one today. Once upon a time, uh, Johnny <laughs> used to. We used to have the big stick of the game. We used to give uh, uh, the, the player who had the biggest hit of the night uh, back in our days uh, over at uh, uh, eight fifty. Well, you know what? Number one, I know that that's not allowed during playoff time. No, but John, we'll come a call him next year. Okay, with the regular season. There you go. Go check him out, uh, Johnnyville Woods in the Fifth Street Arcade. Larry Laird and the Medina Battling Bees on top of St. Ignatius, 24-14 down in Brunswick in the third quarter. Holy Name in the fourth, leading Padua, 27-21. And Green on top of Worcester in the fourth, 21-14. So Maslin will get either Green or Worcester in the Region 7 finale next Friday. Huge play here for Benedictine. Third and 10 at their own 13. Here's Yarbrough. Time. Lofts one to the right for Conco. It's incomplete at the 40-yard line. Step for step, Josh Grogan there on the coverage. Conco actually tried to push off a little bit, and it will set up a fourth down, and Christian Cora will come in to punt. Pass turned him around, and this is something Benedictine did not want to do. Fourth and 10 now on their own 13-yard line. No yards gained in three plays. You know what? Perhaps you try to get four or five yards in a crack yeah. out of the two big, score, big uh, strikes. Cora will stand right at the goal line to punt it to Gabe Gardner, single safety, right at midfield. Walsh Jesuit leading it 31-20 to 20 as we begin this fourth quarter. Cora will angle it right. It's short. It's going to take a bounce for Benedictine, not Walsh Jesuit, inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Actually, a Walsh Jesuit bounce. I was right the first time. Ball will go down to the 39-yard line of the Warriors. 26-yard net yeah. punt. Yeah, not one of Christian's not better Cora. efforts. No. And now Walsh on a short field will take over at the Benedictine 39-yard line with 11.39 to play here in the fourth quarter. Congratulations to Mitch Hewitt and Chardon. They move on to the regional final. They beat Canfield 27-14. to They'll get either... Dover or Kenston. How's that next game? Week. Do we have that score? Yeah, I'm sure Tyler will have yes, it. Yes, he second. will. You know, here's what's interesting: 11:39, running the football, getting two, three, getting two first downs. That eats five, six minutes off this clock. Absolutely mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I mean, the Warriors really controlled the clock in the third quarter. Here's Ochi on a jet sweep to the right, back at the 45 to the 46 yard line, and that's going to be a loss of about seven on the play as the Bengals read it beautifully, and he's he's playing hurt, but Benny Field made the play. The defense is totally different of Benedictine when Benny Field is in the well, game. Well, and it's like the offense is, is different when you got Dwayne Jackson. Yeah. It's just... You know, they don't, Jericho you doesn't need to make excuses. It, yeah. You have to overcome it, but it's just different. Second and 16, off the shotgun. Nadal will have four wide receivers, including trips to the left. And he'll go on the ground to Bremner. Bremner to the 41, and still on his feet inside the 40. Refused to go down. Jennings finally put him down at the 37-yard line. Tough running A gain of by Justin eight. Bremner. And the last three or four were all on him. Yes. Uh, Dover looks like they're going to get Chardon. They're leading Kenston 24-7 in the fourth quarter. I tell you what, Dover... Give them props. <laughs> they beat Aurora last week in overtime, and they're about to beat Kenzie. Yeah. Not easily done. No. Third and nine after that pickup. High snap. Pulled down. Bremner running right. Tripped up as he tried to get out to the 35-yard line. And again, it was uh, actually this time, I think that was Siggers on the tackle. Yeah, Deshaun Laster actually on the tackle from his end spot. And it'll be fourth down. And from the 36, what are we talking about? Fourth and six. If you're Walsh, you wanted to eat up more time on the clock. They didn't and, that's why they're, and that's why they're going for it here, Munch. Mm -hmm. This Fourth is risky. Six. Yeah, it is. This is very risky. They're going to try to get Benedict in the jump. There's no doubt in my mind. Play clock at 14. Warriors with an 11-point lead. Third or fourth and six. Will you take a delay penalty 30. for the punt? I think so. Mm -hmm. Down to five. 
four, three, two. I don't think they'll burn a timeout. I no, think they'll take the penalty. Silly. And there it is. Delay a game coming up. So Benedictine doesn't. Yeah, Benedictine mm -hmm. does not jump off sides, and <laughs> we'll see Heverly in the punt. Now, once again, we've said it the last time, too. Benedictine must do something on this next drive, especially with the clock now yeah. down to 931. They're running out of chances mm -hmm. here, Munch. That's they, they, they got to get two scores. So. Now, I was shocked at the two of their last three plays, and again, they went uh, three downs, you know, four, four and fourth down on a punt, three and out. Four and out is that, um, you know, they tried two deep passes, and they, they just weren't going to work. Play clock at six, low snap. Herberly gets it up, gets that kick away, and it's a good one inside the 10, inside the five, but it will go into the end zone for a touchback. Could not quite get that down to where it would stay out of the end zone. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bengals at the 20 with 9.23 to go here in the fourth quarter. Still plenty of time for the Bengals. Both teams, by the way, with two timeouts remaining here in this game. You know, you should go underneath a little bit more. We saw Jennings wide open running up the hash earlier yeah. that uh, uh, C.J. Iroh just couldn't find but don't, him. But don't force it. That was how the, they had the interception right. earlier in this half. But you're right. I when mean, they were that, driving that down, they yeah. passed the Boyd. Yeah. I mean, it's been there. You just got to make sure you don't force it. But they've tried. I mean, they're, they, they're really they're trying to hit a home run to Boyd. Bring him right back in the game quickly. Yeah. Four wide here for the Bengals. I think Hatcher's now in there as a receiver as well. Reed will shift to the left of, uh, of Yarbrough. They'll go to Conkle on a jet sweep to the 25. Love that play. And out to about the 27-yard line. Because Conkle's running it. Now, interesting note, you know, once again, they have to score to do it. But you get six on the board. Do you go for two? Uh, not now. You don't no. go for two until you have to go for two, in my mind. Second I'm just down. wondering with the offense that's been sluggish. Yeah. You know, if you're going to get back down there again. We're under nine minutes to play. Bengals trailing by 11. They've got a second and two now at the Walsh Jesuit 28. On the ground, here's Reed. He'll get the first down to the 30, and Reed will take it out to the 33-yard line. Gets five on that pickup. It's his best run of the night. Seeing Brandon Boyd single covered on the wide Ooh. side of the field. It'd be interesting that if they run a couple more times and try to spring a pass to well, him. You know what we always say, if, if we see it, coaches see it. I would think so. Yeah. And now, you know what? They did because now the safety's rolling yep. over that way. I heard the defense say, fire, fire, fire <laughs> over on the, the Walsh Jesuit coaching side. First and 10 now for the Bengals. They'll actually mark it near the 34, so give Reed about six on that gain. Long count for C.J. Yarbrough. He goes to throw. Plenty of time. Over the middle. Missed a man that was open. It was Boyd at the 50-yard line. Overshot him. Boyd overshot him by about 10 yards. Yeah. I don't know if uh, Yarborough thought he'd be further upfield or what on that time, but, boy, that was not a good pass at all. Second down and 10. 8-14 to play. 31-20, Walsh Jesuit on top. It'll be Terrell Greer out wide right. And you've got in a bunch formation left, three receivers. Reed to the right of Yarborough who wants to throw. Over the middle, incomplete, trying to throw to Boyd, who again was well covered. And I got to tell you, there was nobody over on, on Luke Reed, the running back, back at about the 30-yard line. He slid out of the backfield to, for the old bubble, and nobody yeah. was there to guard him. Yeah. Third and 10. How big is this? 8.09 to go. And again, you're saying the Bengals starting to run out of chances mm -hmm. here. So, Well, they must score some, uh, some way, shape, or form this drive. Three wide receivers. Yarbrough quickly to the line now with 15 on the play clock. Jennings will be the lone man left. And you got three receivers right and timeout Bengals. Just got to score Highland Falls 23-20 on a field goal as time expired. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, devastating Tough loss one, yeah. for the Highland Hornets. Mm. 23-20 at Cole Tischler, 28-yard field goal at the at the, the clock expired to give Central Catholic that 23-20 victory. Do you know, you know what I've always said one of the best things after all these years of uh, broadcasting is that when folks are listening to the shows react, that's reaction. Somebody at was, the game. Was that our buddy, was that our buddy Brian? Da that Brian? was Brian Day from the oh, George Group. Oh, love yeah. Brian. Love at Brian At the game, Day. and he said he's uh, making sure that he keeps an eye on us, too. Yeah. And... Old buddy Danny 
uh, holy name scored on Padua. I mean, Danny Cunningham is sending us scores. Well, you know, he's an old green wave. I mean, boy, he was yeah. a stud receiver and uh, kickoff and punt returner. 28-21 on Padua with three seconds left. It's now a final. Read in motion. Back, yeah. Third and ten. They'll go to Reed. Back at the 30. Ahead to the 35. Up to the 39-yard line. Going to be about five yards short of a first down. It'll be fourth and five coming up. Reed tried to force it over. Boy, he was uh, hit pretty hard. He was like jackknifed and uh, still put, but still five yards short. Oh, if they'd run that play, the play before. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, he had 20, yeah. 30 yards of play before. Antonio Patterson checks in. Kareem Jennings checks out. Benedictin, fourth and five at the 39 of their own 39. This could be the game with Absolutely. seven minutes and 30 seconds left. Yarbrough gets the snap. Looks to throw. Pass is knocked away at the last minute. Incomplete at the 45-yard line. Oh, what a play by Nick Herberly. Knocked it away from Brandon Boyd at the very last second, and Boyd comes away limping. Heberly, the strong safety, also the punter, 5'10", 175 pounds, so not really you know, a, a jackhammer out there, but he, he made his presence felt on perhaps the biggest play of the game so far. Holy Name will play West Holmes for the Region 10 Championship next Friday because West Holmes beat Rocky River 51-28. to I tell you, shout out to the young men uh, from the Pirates of Rocky River representing a great season. phenomenal season. Great Lakes Conference champions. Walsh Jesuit with an 11-point lead will take over with 7.23 to go in the game. At the Benedictine 39, they'll go on the ground. Here's Bremner to the 35-yard line and put down there. Gain of close to four, and now it's it's really work that clock time mm -hmm. for Walsh Jesuit, and they've done a brilliant job of that all game long. And that's actually Romanini on the carry. It's the second or third time tonight I've confused Jack and Justin, and I apologize. And the Bengals only one time out that's left. That's it, yeah. You, you can't use it down here now. you got to get the ball back. Right. Romanini gets four, second down and six. If he snaps that ball before three seconds at all on this drive, I'll be shocked. So you've got Kish and you've got Romanini in the backfield. Here's Romanini once again, gets around Jennings inside the 35 and takes it down to the 34, short pickup, and it will be third down coming up. Third and five, third and six. Be interesting to see. Down to the 34, they're calling it, and 620. We'll keep you posted in the time because that seems to be the uh, biggest uh, friend of Walsh Jesuit right now yeah. and the biggest enemy of the Bengals. 31-20, Walsh Jesuit on top. Third down and five. Here for the Warriors at the Benedictine 34. Like three wide receivers, Casey Kish and Jack Romanini are in the backfield. Next to quarterback, Matt Nadel. Gets the snap, gives Kish, runs to the right inside the 35 and taken down close to the 31-yard line by Bettingfield. It'll be fourth and two. Fourth and two coming up. And you know what? You go for it, Tom. Oh, there. totally. Yeah, totally. About 540 and a clock yeah. running. Totally now. You know, you, you, you let either Kish or Romanini get the carry, follow behind that offensive line, and, and get a first down and really try to ice this one away. Here's Nadel with a fourth and two coming up. Clock down to 525 and counting to go in the fourth quarter. 31 to 20, Warriors. Play clock is at 10. Nadel takes a step back. I'm fourth and short to give. Kish needs to get to the 29-yard line. Well, his team thinks he got it. Looks he like up he here it. he's got it. And I think the chain gang is going to in agreement. That's going to be a first down for Casey Kish. And once again, and Jesuit. when you needed some yardage, uh, Brand Horst and Khalil are the guys that are uh, clearing the path there. Just needed two yards, and you got them easily. Yeah, this undersized, if you'll call it, Walsh Jesuit oh, offensive they line. They play brilliantly those tonight. They have both sides. You know, all five of those guys. Fresh set of downs. In the box yeah. for the Bengals. Fresh set of downs. More clock ticking down. We're under five minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Walsh Jesuit with an 11-point lead, and they'll go to Romanini. And surged ahead for about a yard or so, and then got pushed back. It'll be second and long. 
Right now, the Bengals uh, could hope to uh, force a fumble to, to stop them. I mean, but right now, even if they stop them with uh, three more downs, they get the ball back with three minutes. And still need two yeah, scores. still need two scores. Mm -hmm. I mean, Walsh Jesuit, what, what they did before halftime, the way they managed the clock was perfect. And they've done a great job in the second half of managing the clock while still not losing their aggressiveness. Second and nine. Nadal gives. Romanini will shift to his left to the 25. He's to the 20. Still on his feet and finally wrestled down at the 18-yard line. Give Romanini 10. And another first down for Walsh Jesuit. Romanini kept his legs churning, kept those knees going high. You get those knees high, you're going to make a tackle. You're getting a knee in your chin. It doesn't feel too good. More clock running. Three and a half to go here in Illyria. Walsh Jesuit can sense now a trip to the regional final. And who will they get, Dino? Well, at last check, it was uh, Hoban with the lead, 21-7 to in the fourth quarter. Oh, and uh, they lost a nail-biter to Hoban earlier. Yes, they did. Yeah. They're, they're vindicating themselves here now against the Bengals. Back on the ground again. Running Romanini inside the 15. A flag goes down as Romanini taken out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Coming into tonight, Benedictine had eight consecutive victories over Walsh Jesuit, including in the playoffs last year and including week one of this year. One-point win. Holding against the Warriors is the penalty call to stop the clock with 3.08 to go here in the fourth quarter. 31-20, Walsh Jesuit. But you're right, Munch. You know, you, if, if, if the Warriors hang on, get the win here tonight, they'll have finally gotten that uh, exercise that Benedictine, and if you will. And please, anybody religiously, please don't hurt me for that. I, I, didn't mean <laughs> I that. won't hurt yeah. you. For, is yeah. this like the exorcism tour yes. then? For, yeah, uh, yeah, I just realized I'm like, okay. Redemption tour. I right? used that earlier, yes. yes. But, uh, yeah, please forgive me on that to the Pope Paul. But uh, it will be then, you know, another uh, shot at Akron Hoban. Potentially, if that score holds up next week. After the penalty, it is Kish getting the carry this time inside the 30. And Kish will take it forward near the 21. Got about nine on that pickup on second and 21. He was stopped near the line of scrimmage and just kept pushing the ball forward. So it'll be third and about 12. Actually, second and 12. Mm -hmm. I apologize. They didn't lose the down on the penalty, so second and 12. You have to remember this, too. This is definitely curter range if they have to kick a field goal. Yeah. And that's still put, that puts uh, Benedict in two touchdowns down. Yeah. And right now, for all intents and purposes, the Bengals, they're yeah. two scores down anyway. And the Bengals really, again, with one timeout, they, they are really limited about stopping the clock well, here. Well, 225 left in yeah. the game. In motion is Gardner. The give will be to the left. And I think that was... Romanini will be the carrier to the 19. And that'll set up now a third and 10 as we approach two minutes to go. Walsh Jesuit just salting this away with their running game. Romanini punishing would-be tacklers. And that's uh, something showing that his legs are still fresh. And he's played defense the entire game, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Ball at the 18. So it will be third down, and we'll call it about nine. And really nothing fancy by the line blocking to uh, uh, negate the size difference. Natal was about to get a snap. We've got a flag down I here. believe Benedict jumped again. Oh, for like the fifth time tonight, another pre-snap offside penalty on the Bengals. So now, instead of third and a long nine, it's third and a long four. Wow, out to the 13-yard line. Deshaun Lasser that time was uh, the, the man who jumped. Mm -mm -mm. That's not football. We are down to 130 and counting the play as the clock starts moving again. Walsh Jesuit about to get their 11th win of the year and on their way to the regional final. Matt Nadel gets the snap on third down. He'll give it. It's Kish back at the 15. He'll plunge forward to about the 14-yard line, back to the line of scrimmage, and Benedictine will take their final timeout with 1.10 to go, and it'll be a fourth down and five. Jimmy Brandhorst doing a great job. He's been the anchor of that line so far, the and right he guard. Has been. Yeah, and he's just uh, moving from right to left, almost like a, a little pull that time, or a counter from the guard position to try to open up a hole. Yeah, I just... I just love the way this offensive line has played tonight for 
Walsh Jesuit. But, I mean, we came in talking about, you know, Benedict and with all their weapons on defense, Jennings, Bettingfield, McDonald. They've been terrific. Uh, by the way, it is a final. The Knights of Hoban are advancing to the regional championship. Tim Terrell's count a squad. 35-7 win over Nordonia. So it will be Hoban, and barring anything unforeseen, it will be Hoban and Walsh Jesuit next Friday night. Well, two A programs, Nordonia and Hoban, and all I can say is something I have said in the past. The night time is the right time. Yes, you have said that. Uh, voice of the Knights for a couple of years, Mr. Bishop. So if I'm looking at this, you've got... So you're going to have Avon and Toledo Central Catholic in six. Hoban and Walsh Jesuit in five. I mean... And it looks like it's going to be Green and Maslin in seven. They're going to kick a field goal. Oh, they're going to try a field goal. 40 yard, a 30 yarder, I'm sorry. Yeah, here's Cooper Curta to make it a 14 point lead. Ball is down. Curtis' kick is up on its way. And, well, he missed one earlier, but he got that one. So with a minute six to field go. Goal for Curta. 34 20 with 106 to play. All right, more from Tyler Carey. Green and Maslin will indeed play the Region 7 final next week. So pretty much now, Division 2 is coming into play. Avon beat Olmstead Falls, 49-21. Folks, I promise we'll run all these down mm -hmm. for you in the post game. So Avon and Toledo Central Catholic next week. I would imagine you probably want to, I would say Little Giant Stadium in Fremont would probably mm -hmm. be... Uh, maybe there, maybe Sandusky or Huron. Uh, they've played that game in Huron a couple times, too. Okay. So I would I would venture to guess somewhere around there. Green and Maslin will play next week. Port Clinton was a winner over Perkins tonight, 19-14. to You got West Holmes against Holy Name. So I think the only, the, I think the only last score we're looking for is Ignatius, Ignatius and Medina. And, Medina. and uh, they'll that be one. against St. Ed's. We're yeah. thinking Brunswick on that. Brunswick or well, if if it's if it's Medina, it would be Brunswick. It would either be, be Brunswick be, or Byers, Byers yeah. one of the two. Well, it can't be Byers because of Ignatius, because Correct. of their home field. Yeah. Correct. Thirty-four twenty with a minute six to go. Walsh Jesuit in the lead. Do they tee it off? Do they kick it deep? I wouldn't. No. You know how I feel about that. I wouldn't. <laughs> why? I want, why, why, I want why give no the gun? part. I want and no they part. It deep. Of, they kick it right to him. Line drive kick. Fielded at the 3. Out to the 10. I believe that's Boyd to the 20. It is Boyd. 25-30. 35-40. 45-yard 40, line, and he's taken down there. And again, you got 55 seconds to go, I realize. But, you know, if he takes that back for a touchdown munch, then all of a sudden you're uh, – actually, that was Conkle. That was not Boyd. That was Conkle. But right now, here's what I know is that this is striking distance of one pass yeah. for a touchdown if indeed C.J. could hook up with one of his receivers. Medina is leading St. Ignatius 27-14 at last count that's in the third quarter. We oh, have just not the gotten, third? Yeah, we have not gotten an update since then. So, Oh, with all the passing, that's yeah. why the clock is going to Right, with Drew starting. Aller and company. <laughs> that wouldn't shock me a bit. That wouldn't shock me a bit. <laughs> If that's still in the third. All right. Yarbrough ready, and before he can get the playoff, we've got a flag down thrown from the defensive secondary and would lead me to believe uh, delay a game. I didn't see the uh, – I didn't see – I was going to say the – I didn't see the uh, play the, the clock. Play yeah. clock. But it was thrown by that back umpire, mm -hmm. and that would lead one to believe it's what it was, first and 15 now, back at the 40-yard line, 55 seconds to go. Benedictine needs two touchdowns quickly. Yarbrough's throw is incomplete as he was throwing it towards Boyd on the left side who was being uh, heavily, heavily defended. You know, you double-team Conkle, you double-team Boyd. I understand there's other guys that uh, could make plays on that offense. Uh, Greer, uh, Benningfield, I don't think he's going to be a – well, I don't think. I, I know he won't be a factor offensively down the stretch here. By the way, that game now with uh, St. Ignatius and Medina is now indeed in the fourth quarter. All right, second down and 15. Four wide receivers for the Bengals. Yarbrough throws right pass caught. It's Greer with it. He'll get pushed out of bounds by Charlie Klug at the 45-yard line of Walsh Jesuit right at that first down marker. 
And with 45 seconds to go, first down, Bengals. Klug has done a great job today. A lot of anticipation the way he plays. And he was right there at the time. It was a great pass, uh, good completion. But uh, Klug has been a, a superstar in that defensive backfield for he the really Washington has Warriors been. today. Yes. Four wide receivers. Baker back in at running back. Yarbrough to throw. Launches one deep down the middle. And it's incomplete at the five-yard line. And Yarbrough got lit up pretty good that time on a clean, legitimate hit by who? Rodgers. Yes, <laughs> Whether it's left, whether it's right, whether it's coming up the gut, Tyron Rodgers has been just a force today at 5'8", 240 pounds. With 39 seconds to go, Tyron Rodgers just shook everybody. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, the game's not over yet, but Rodgers, I just saw just shake everybody's hand on the offensive line for Benedictine. That's pretty cool. That, that, was, that was fun to see. Just out of respect, hey, the game's not over, but you know, I appreciate you guys. Yarbrough throws left. It's incomplete, looking for Patterson at the 42-yard line. And some late pushing. and sh you know, It was all good with handshakes <laughs> before it started. and then With 34 think, seconds, guys, come on. Yeah, Drew Erdman and Anthony Iliano kind of got mixed up after that play. Incomplete, third and 10 with 34 seconds to go. <laughs> uh, the sportsmanship stopped there when the ball was snapped. <laughs> All right, again, four wide receivers for the Bengals. It's third and 10 for them at the Walsh Jesuit 45. Here's Yarbrough, quick throw. Greer's got it at the 40 to the 35, out of bounds at the 32. That's another first down with 29 seconds to go. So, but you know, that's not helping you <laughs> stay, no, it's not, try no. to come back in this game. Not with 29 seconds mm -hmm. to go. you got to get one you in the end, in the end zone, zone yeah. And that's the key, you know, Munch, that's how big that field goal was by Curter just a few moments ago because, you know, if... if you know, Jared Good wanted to at this point. If it's an 11 point deficit, he could have kicked the field goal and said, okay, let's go for an onside. Mm -hmm. Can't do that by 14 trailing. As the throw to Greer knocked away and almost intercepted. And I think that was Charlie Klug Charlie again at Klug the five yard all line. All it was. The place. Breaking oh up gosh. that pass intended for Terrell Greer. Yeah, you put a couple of warrior more, more warrior decals on his helmet after the game he's had today. Yeah, 23 seconds to go, 34 to 20. It'll be second and 10. Getting some text from uh, the Warriors faithful, very proud, as they're saying they're undersized. Oh, but they've been, they've been terrific. Yeah. Offensive tonight. line, especially 10 yeah. with the Bengals, yeah. Here is Yarbrough, looks right, throws towards Greer, and it's incomplete. Klug was right with him. And Greer with open, too, and to go. get it to him. Third and 10, 19 seconds to play as Walsh Jesuit lost in week one to Benedictine in double overtime, 35-34. On a blocked extra, extra point. point by and came, back, <laughs> and came back and got the win here tonight. They lost two weeks later to Hoban in double overtime, 35-34. They'll get another crack at the Knights next week as Greer drops that pass at the 20-yard line, incomplete. And that'll set up fourth down in the last effort here for Benedictine with 14 seconds they to have, go. That is the main play they've run on this drive, and Greer has been open now. The best part is this, though, is that Klug, as soon as he catches the ball, gets him out of bounds or tackles him. Yep. He wasn't going to let him get by. Well, dis he's well disciplined. Mm -hmm. And this is a both teams, well coached teams. I'll tell yes. you something special. This was a Nick Alexander cherry on the Sunday job oh. today. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about it when we get into the post game. It's just uh, they wanted this one so badly. Yarbrough to throw on fourth down, being chased by Urban, and Urban's going to get him. Ball comes loose, picked up by the Warriors, and I got to tell you, Warriors would have been off to the races for a touchdown on the other end. And Casey Kish caught, got that fumble, and slipped at the 45-yard <laughs> line. Otherwise, I think he'd have been going the other way for a touchdown. But Urban gets the sack, and Walsh Jesuit with five seconds to play will go to the victory formation, and finally, finally beat Benedictine after eight straight setbacks. Erdman, you called his name frequently. One of the uh, the reserves coming in and, and playing a big, big game today for the Walsh Jesuit Warriors. That defensive line was great tonight. Mm -hmm. Rodgers, Brock, Erdman, Fida, Bailey. Hunter Knopf. I mean, he got in there as well. Yeah, everybody contributed. All right, so Matt Nadel will get the snap, go to a knee, and Walsh Jesuit. Gets the win over Benedictine here in Elyria. Hugs next to us by the coaching staff in the booth <laughs> as the Warriors advance to the Division II Region 5 championship game. They will take on Archbishop Hoban next Friday.
on the strength of a 34 to 10 win tonight here at Ely Stadium. You know, interesting, and once again, it's part of the game. It makes you wonder, had Jackson been in, had Ben yes. Field not, uh, you know, had to take leave and he wasn't himself today. But the bottom line is, Walsh Jesuit's game plan was phenomenal. They took it to the Bengals, whatever they could. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Munch, it, it, it's one of those things. It's, you know, you, you'll always wonder what if, you know, mm -hmm. if you had Dwayne Jackson in there. But um, the Warriors were tough on both sides of the ball tonight. I don't feel they're denied regardless, even nope. if Jackson was in. I agree. Yeah. I, they, they, I, I remember so clearly being down in Cuyahoga Falls for that matchup in week one and how dejected the Warriors were because of the, you know, because they had, you know, had lost that game and they had, they had, had put that game as such a big benchmark, mm -hmm. you know, one of their goals, you know, we want to beat Benedict and we want to beat Hoban. We want to win, you know, X amount of games. We want to get to the playoffs. We want to win the state championship. And, you know, losing the way they lost in week one, you you wondered if they were going to be able to bounce back and how, how well they would bounce back. And, you know, they played so well in the regular season and were, you know, finished out eight and two. And now they've won three consecutive playoff games, knocking out Hudson in the process, and tonight knocking out Benedictine. Walsh Jesuit student section just waiting for his team. They were told to stay off the field, so they're going to do that. And interesting, too, you know, what you notice is that, is noted is that Benedictine at one time, number one in the state yes. this season in Division Two. It didn't seem to phase the Warriors today. They came out, they were confident, and their game plan was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it really was much... It was a bread and butter type of game. I mean, yeah, they got a big touchdown pass to Bell from Nato to Bell, but it was a big dose of Bremner and Romanini and a little bit of Casey Kish too mm -hmm. running the ball tonight. And uh, Romanini was for, for, the, for the tough yardage. Yep, he was the man kept it, kept those legs grinding this and that. And Bremner, when he when he hit the seam, hit the hole, yep. or turned it outside, he was he was going to pick up some yardage. And, you know, you think about it, and you said it earlier. You know, they they went into this year thinking it was going to. We're going to have Will Rumpel back. He was such a big part of their running game last year. Tore his ACL before the year started out for the year. And then I remember, you know, LaShawn Crenshaw had been so big for them. He played so well in week one in their loss against Benedictine. Didn't have him available. I'm glad you said so. What we want people to realize, it's Chubb and Hunt went down. And it's the Ernest Johnson <laughs> yes. and, 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 that's and what's Felton. <laughs> yeah, next man up. Right. And, and, and that's so, what happened today. And, and, you know, no Ruppel, no Crenshaw. You've got Bremner. You've got Romanini. And they have done a terrific job picking up the slack. And, you know, Matt Nadel made throws tonight when he needed to make throws. He threw a couple of dimes uh, to Ochi, Campania, and certainly to Trey Bell on that touchdown. And... You know, again, defensively tonight, Munch, I, th I thought, you know, the, there wasn't enough of a running game without Dwayne Jackson, certainly, mm -hmm. but they didn't allow that the passing game. You know, they, they, they may have given up some chunk plays, but they never allowed the home run. And, you know, they, they were able to kind of protect that lead. It was 24-20 at halftime, and it was 31-20 for the longest time. You know, their defense protected that lead. And then it ended up being 34-20 as the final. And one thing, even on that last drive, I pointed out with with uh, Charlie Clug is that what the DBs for Walsh were doing was keeping the Bengals. Like, we're going to give you 20, 25 yards. Yeah. We're not going to give you 50 or 60. Right. And that's exactly So if you want to complete those, fine. And uh, it was just it was brilliant strategy all the way around on offense and defense for the Warriors. All right. Let's, uh, let's run down the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. Then we'll get some final thoughts here from Mark Munch Bishop here from Elyria. All right. The other, again, the other Division Five regional semifinal tonight, or Division Two Region Five semifinal. I'll get that out. Uh, Archbishop Holbin ends the season of the Nordonia Knights. What a great year for the Knights and Jeff Fox, uh, as they they played well good all people. year long. You know, great, Jeff Fox yeah. as good as they get, and great, uh, great. Uh, School, great to love. Love it when they've got uh, uh, the, the horse rider coming out oh, to lead the Knights out of the tunnel. Uh, but Hoban tonight uh, did what they had to do. They beat Nordonia 35-7. So that sets you up now. Hoban and Walsh Jesuit next Friday for the regional championship. Um, 
Get your get your tickets for that one, folks. You won't want to miss it. It'll be quite the game. It'll be another rematch game somewhere. You know, who knows where they're going to play that game? I, you know, I I would say, well, geez, if Hoban you're, and Walsh, it's Hoban, going to be in this area. You would you would think? Let's see, Hoban and Walsh would it, it was something you'd want to have a, I would say, yeah, I would love to see it in mm-hmm. the position. Uh, you know, maybe they play that game at Twinsburg. The way Walsh shoots like today, that. the hour yeah. drive, there's, the visiting stands were packed. Yeah, yeah, they'll go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So that's your Hold on. Sh- should I text Mike Vrabel? Let him know what happened. I think he knows already. I think he knows already. I think Vrabel knows already. Yeah, he okay. knows already. <laughs> hey, one, of his, one of his best friends and his teammates on the uh, early 90s Walsh Jesuit team, Scott Carr, just texted me. Oh, okay. and, he, <laughs> and, Scotty, and Scott, Scott, Yeah, the Carr family is listening. Scotty oh, is one Scott. of Mike's best friends. Okay. And, uh, Make I'm sure, sure at this knows. point, Vrabel knows. <laughs> uh, all right. In Region 6, Division 2, Avon over Olmstead Falls, 49-21. Toledo Central Catholic edged Highland on a last-second field goal by Cole Tischler, 23-20. So Central Catholic and Avon will meet for the Division VI crown next Friday. Division uh, Two, Region Seven, Green over Worcester, 21-14. And the Bulldogs will face Maslin. The Tigers just routed uh, Sudbury Big Walnut. I think it was 38 to nothing. I think, was the final Tyler Carey told me. Uh, let's see. I have it somewhere. It was uh, thirty-eight nothing. Yep, that's right. So that's your uh, that's d- division two. Mm-hmm. Everything is basically all set. Division one, region one. Half we're halfway there. At last report, it's Medina twenty-seven, Saint Ignatius fourteen. As they play that game in Brunswick in the fourth quarter, the winner gets Saint Edward, who shut out Canton McKinley tonight, forty-two to nothing. That's division one, wow. region one. Uh, I will tell you right now, no matter what happens in Division One, Region One, it is our intention to have that regional final for you next Friday night. Be it, you know, in uh, in Byers Field or in Brunswick or wherever it is, that is our plan to be there next Friday for the Division One, Region One final. Um, I, I've called a couple of those Division One, Region One finals, and they've always been legendary. I would anticipate, no matter who plays St. Edward, it will be again. Will that be the state champ? No, uh, I don't want to say that because every because okay. every time I feel like it will, I, it is like Pickerington Central or somebody down in that Columbus area, mm-hmm. you know, ends up winning that other st- that state state semifinal. Hilliard schools, so yeah, gonna, yeah, or Hilliard School mm-hmm. to set up a, a, re- a match against one of the Cincinnati. I had to schools. put you on the spot there. Yeah, yeah I, it's okay. that. I know that. Uh, <laughs> Division Four, Ursuline. Knocked out Glenville tonight, 42-38. to 38. So, Ted Ginn Sr.'s wow. team, uh, the Tar Blooders. So, Coach Reardon and Ursula. Yeah, 42-38. Right they on. get the win. So, that'll uh, take us out of Division 4 because I think Perry lost tonight as well, according to TC. Um, in Division 3, Region 9, you've got Chardon advancing to the regional final, trying to defend their their state championship. They beat Canville t- Canfield 27 to 14. Hilltoppers will get Dover next Friday. Dover beat uh, Kenston. That was a 24 to 7 final. So that's your Division Three Region Nine. In Region Ten, you had uh, let's see. Was, I'm looking at my scoreboard here. I should. I got to write this down. Uh, West Holmes beat Rocky River 51 to 28, and it was Holy Name the winner. Over Padua, twenty-eight to twenty-one. So those are all your finals in and around high school football in state playoffs tonight. Follow wkyc.com. We will let you know. As again, it's a final. Uh, when was the final Medina and Saint Ignatius? And uh, we basically can start putting things together from there. Um, also, by the way, the Cavaliers are a winner tonight. They beat the Pistons by 20 much, 98-78. Well, you know, they were, A, a little angry that uh, they couldn't finish against the Wizards the other night, something yeah. that they have been doing this year. And uh, the Pistons reading a little bit. I want to see what uh, it will be when I get home. The uh, guy that has different positions, but just the Mobley, Cunningham kind of, uh, yeah. uh, you know, that see dynamic, how they did. Yeah, how, the, how that played out. That's a good point. That's a real good point. 
Um, yeah, so those are all your scores here tonight at uh, Mercy Health Field at Ely Stadium. You know, it's a it, it, to me, it's a brand new stadium because it still feels new. I've, I can't. I'm with you 100. Yeah, percent I mean, I, after calling so many games at Old Ely Stadium up, up north, um, just a little bit north of here, um, but this is a, a brand, a beautiful, beautiful facility, and they took great care of us tonight, and they witnessed a, a terrific ball game between Benedictine and Walsh Jesuit. But tonight it was the Warriors' night as they beat the Bengals 34-20 to to advance to the regional final against Hoban and Munch as we uh, wrap things up here from uh, Illyria and uh, let everybody see us again here. Uh, we remind oh, let me everybody. see him real good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These uh, helped a few times I, They yeah. did. They bailed me out a couple times. Uh, again, we want to thank uh, Chick-fil-A. They are our sponsor, WKYC's High School Football Game of the Week, presented by Chick-fil-A. Stop by your neighborhood Chick-fil-A in Cleveland, Akron, Canton. It is the home of the original chicken sandwich. And, uh, you know, you and I have an affinity for these two teams, the Bengals and the, and the Warriors. Oh, there's no and doubt. I, go, they, I mean, you go back a long way. Go back to when there was the, the, the Turkey Day game yeah. at Municipal Stadium with, uh, you know, 40,000, 50,000 people to watch a high school game, East Senate against oh. West Senate. I miss those, da I miss those days. Early Thanksgiving morning, she were home by 2 o'clock yeah. for Thanksgiving meal, and uh, the chance that the cheerleaders used to be, hey, hey, what do you say? We'll be there on Turkey Day. Oh, God, I would love that. Would, Special that would be awesome. Yeah, now pass. again, playoffs do change things. Yes, indeed. And, you know, tonight, it's just Walsh wasn't going to be denied much. And, and, no, and you're right. The way, they, the way they came in and played, both sides of the ball overcame. You know, both teams had big plays on special teams. Both teams had miscues on special mm -hmm. teams. Overcame the mistakes. And, you know, finally, you know, Nick Alexander and, and, and this, this team and this program – Finally got over the Benedictine hurdle that had been, you know, kind of plaguing them for the last few years, and can they carry that momentum to Hoban and, you know, get that redemption as you put it after getting the redemption tonight against the Bengals? And something else I noted too: we didn't see as much Ochi, uh, Ochi as we thought we were going to see. Okay, yeah. and even not that much Campania. Believe that the most of the offense, besides the running backs, was run through Bell. Yep. And Bell, with the, you know, we talk about speed kills. Yep. Well, the bottom line is, what does Benedictine have him going for him? With Conkle, what boy, speed. Yep. And Walsh Jesuit used that against Benedictine. They took their weapon of speed Turned and used it against, it against the Bengals. Yes. Yeah, on special teams with a big return that Bell had and certainly on the 58-yard touchdown pass in the first half that really kind of helped to get Walsh stabilized after kind of things had gone back and forth a little bit. And that touchdown kind of gave them some momentum, and, and they never lost it the rest of the well, night. Well, Cuyahoga Falls may not be the same, huh? After no, this right? Tonight. Right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun ride home back down to Summit County for the Warriors, and uh, we'll find out on Sunday afternoon where they're going to be playing Hoban at, but they know they'll get the Knights, and they'll get another shot at uh, Archbishop Hoban, the defending state champs in Division Two. Do you know what was, in your opinion, the biggest downfall today for the Bengals, not being able to do, take advantage of the red zone foibles? Yeah, the red zone foibles, um, you know, not being able to run the ball. And, and once Jackson left, they couldn't, they, you know, they couldn't get. They had one Baker, big run and that yeah, was it. That yeah. was it. You know, Baker had one big run. He had problems holding on to the football and they kind of went away from him. And I, I thought that was big. I thought not being able to execute in the red zone was big. And the other thing, Munch, I, I thought those pre-snap penalties. I mean, there was. It's one thing you have one or two offsides penalties. You know, you're antsy. You you want to get in and make a play. I mean, there were there were five or, or, or and more deep penalties. in in their yeah. territory when Walsh was attacking, uh, bail, was going bailing them out. Yeah, you know, bailing out the Warriors. And, and I, I thought that was another thing. They couldn't they couldn't get off the field. And a lot of times they couldn't help themselves. They weren't helping themselves mm -hmm. with those penalties. And, you know, it's interesting because you think of them that, and I, I mentioned too, like if a team's back on their own 10 or 15, you know what, I may jump on occasion, okay? Yeah. Just to play and get right up to the quarterback and as you walk away, say, I thought I got your snap count. I'll get it next time, that kind of thing. But the penalties today by the Bengals were devastating. Yep. There's no doubt devastating. Uh, you, you've got to score. After they force them, I mean, you want to talk momentum from the get-go? Yeah. Walsh Jesuit fumbles the opening kickoff. Benedict thinks it's nothing can't, out yeah, of can execute. Zero. Yeah. You almost feel like the tone was set right there. Yes. The way, the way things have played I out. I mean, I thought when they got the field goal by Cora, the 48-yarder before halftime, I thought that was going to be 
the, the, the play that would maybe shift momentum back to Benedict, and Walsh Jesuit didn't allow it in the second half. They, they played uh, a, a very much of an of a, it, this is going to sound like an oxymoron, mm -hmm. an aggressive keep away. No, no, you, know, you said it a few. No, you were exactly right because, you know, by aggressive, they were gaining chunks of yardage, yep. but they weren't doing anything to give, in, you know, I mean, you could fumble at any time, yep. but they weren't doing anything risky with the football. Yeah, right game plan, and it was executed well. And it resulted in a 14-point win tonight here in Elyria for Walsh Jesuit. All right, that's going to do it for us. Uh, big, big thanks to Tyler Carey back at TC. Uh, TC for taking good care of us with our scoreboard. Again, you read his game story at WKYC.com. And we will let you know uh, as early as we can uh, our intentions for next Friday night. But we we have every intention of being at that Division One Region 1 championship game. Uh, be it at Byers Field or be it at Brunswick Auto Mart Stadium. I can't imagine it would be a, anywhere besides those two venues uh, for next week. So that that's our intention, and we'll let you know for sure next week where we're going to be. Um, it is great to have a headset back on you, well, my friend. Hopefully I could jump in with you again here before well, the season ends. We'd love that. We would love that. I Thank appreciate you. that. And again, people, uh, head to WKYC.com and watch Monica Robbins' story on the medical magic that is Mark Munch Bishop. Thank a lot you. Of, uh, you know, and thank you to the doctors. I, I, I'm so Drake happy. And, uh, yeah, the doctors d did their jobs, so you could be back here doing your job with me. Thank you, you to the man upstairs, too. Absolutely. Thank you, bro. Love you, you, you so much, man. Love you. Thank you. All right, we love you, folks. Thank you so much for watching and listening tonight from Elyria. Again, your final in this Division II Region 5 semifinal, Walsh Jesuit 34 and Benedictine 20. For Mark Munch Bishop, I'm Dave Dinatale. Thanks for watching the WKYC Playoff Game of the Week.